I don't know about you, but I am super excited because today I'm going to be covering Sonic Adventure 2, otherwise known as my all-time favorite Sonic game. Actually, scratch that. My all-time favorite game of all time. It's pretty tricky choosing what your favorite game is, but after uh, thinking about it for a couple years, I decided this was this one. And you're going to discover why that is by going through this video with me. We are going to be covering the making of Sonic Adventure 2, some of the new changes, new elements, the level design, the storyline, and even the Chow Garden. All these will be time stamped down below because this video is probably going to be very long. If the last video is any indication, make sure you watch my other Sonic videos in retrospective to get some ideas, especially the Sonic Adventure one. We'll give you a lot of context for this video. And without further ado, let's get into it. We start our adventure, quite literally, in San Francisco, which is the city we see here in the first level of Sonic Adventure 2, known as City Escape, which is one of the most iconic Sonic levels of all time. Why am I mentioning this? Well, San Francisco is one of the most important elements of the game, since after making Sonic Adventure, Sonic Team, now known as Sonic Team USA, decided that they're going to move a little bit there, just a little bit of people, like they did for Sonic 2, for Sonic Adventure 2. Isn't that interesting? And San Francisco is where they chose to be, because San Francisco is also known as Silicon Valley. Well, it used to be. Now it's kind of a crap hole. So yeah, Sonic Team USA was created. You... you Yuji Naka, as well as Chitaki Izuka, moved there to make Sonic Adventure 2. One of the main reasons why the team moved all the way to San Francisco was because they wanted to make sure that both continuities of the American and Japanese lined up. Because I mentioned before, the American one didn't line up very well with the Japanese one. They scrapped pretty much a lot of elements that were featured in the American canon. Other than the fact that Eggman's name is Robotnik, and that Sonic likes Chili Dog, so we won't be seeing that feature for a while. That's a weird one of the weird things actually brought back. So yeah, that's about it for American continuity. Sonic likes chili dogs, and Eggman's real name is Robotnik. And that's about it. Here's the team posing right in front of the city. Of course, they would not like working the city since they had a lot of trouble, especially with parking tickets. It made them so mad that they wanted to destroy all the cars, which is actually a feature of City Escape where you destroy cars. Sonic also got a slate redesign for Sonic Adventure 2. As you can see, everything looks the same. Except his shoes! Yeah, Sonic has new shoes for promotion with this company known as Soap, who makes who made grind shoes for a very short time period. Sonic was given similar style shoes to the real life ones, except his were more stylized after his classic shoes. Now you think fans would get mad, like, oh, Sonic shoes are changed, as we all know Sonic fans get pissed off, but I'm quite not, not kidding, everybody loves these shoes, and they've returned in l recent Sonic games as extra DLC and content that Sonic can wear. So about these shoes are just extra sleek and look really nice. And the main reason why they're implemented in the game is not only the promotion, but to add Sonic a new moveset known as Grinding. Sonic Adventure 2 was of course going to be a big game. After all, this was the swan song for the Dreamcast. Well, the Dreamcast did well for itself, and eventually was just running out of steam. And with new consoles coming out in 2000 and 2001, it seemed like the Dreamcast just didn't have any leg up. Not only was the PS2 dominating as soon as it hit the sales in 2000, but in 2001, not only was Nintendo releasing their new console for the 6th generation, but as well as a newcomer, Xbox, which made it so that it didn't seem like Sega had any reason to be in the market anymore. So they decided to cancel the Dreamcast with an announcement that Sonic was going to go multi-platform. But before that happened, they released Sonic Adventure 2 on the Dreamcast in 2001 on Sonic's 10th anniversary. This is the first ever anniversary game. In case you're wondering. Of course, it's ironic because now the game is 20 years old, and it's celebrating Sonic's 10th anniversary. Time has flown, hasn't it? Sonic Adventure 2 has mostly the same playstyle for Sonic here, and he was the main one they focus on. They had two other playstyles they're also working on, including the Knuckles and Gamma style stages, with Gamma getting a new character but be replacing him since he's dead. And Sonic stages were more streamlined. They wanted it so that it'd be easier to have easier flow and better momentum for each stage rather than players having to go through a hub world, which we love the hub world, but it made sense sometimes. Look, the hub world in Sonic Adventure 1 is great, but there is future hub worlds in Sonic that aren't nor near as good, and they made sense, you know. So they wanted it to be similar to the classic games where you go from one level to the next, with story in between each of them. As well as the flow, Sonic has new movement speeds and a lot of new little moves that make him better. Stuff like the light speed dash being better in this game, uh, new bounce bracelets and somersaults and trick systems as well as grinding makes Sonic move pretty fit fluently, especially since the game ends now at a native speed of 60 frames per second, making this one of the best controlling Sonic games of all time. Knuckles also gets our playthrough this time. We'll discuss more of his to playthrough when we get to his uh, part in the storyline. 
but Knuckles is also returning, and he has his own storyline. Well, originally he was going to have his own storyline. One of the most interesting gameplay designs is the fact that they decided that they were going to let players play as the big old egghead himself. Yes, in his first playable debut, well, unless you count Sonic Drift or Sonic R, but we're not counting that right now, you, players can play as Eggman in a main Sonic game through his own story where he's trying to do his own devious plans. And this was cool and all, however, when, the, when this was revealed to fans at E3 2000, fans were pissed off. Why? Because there's a certain uh, two-tailed fox that was missing from that lineup. A lot of the information about this scenario is not well known, but based off what we can see in the gameplay itself, it's pretty evident that Knuckles and Eggman were only the other two playable characters in the game, and that Tails, Shadow, and Rouge were not originally going to be playable. We can see a little bit of this, however, they did fix some of the elements, which is why Tails in the game plays the same playstyle as Eggman. Not only does it streamline by having only three different playstyles, still while keeping the six different playable characters, it's a very interesting concept. Now, I don't mind it, but however, it is kind of weird that Tails is in a mech, even though he probably would have been get better around, maybe, in, you know, his running in his own state. But hey, at least we got to play as Tails. It could have just removed him in general. Because this has been the first mainline Sonic game to not have a playable Tails, and that would have been a travesty for a lot of Tails fans. And he has some dedicated fans, I'll tell you that. Like I said, none of this information is that clear, and it's not well documented. Other than the fact that we know that at least those three characters were originally going to be the only characters... However, it makes a lot more sense of what we got in the end because not having Shadow or Rouge playable would, felt, would feel really uh, non-good. Let's just say that. Non-good. That's a good word, isn't it? Essentially, they are very important characters in the storyline and getting to actually play as them it actually helps the player resonate with them rather than just playing as Eggman the whole time with the dark storyline. Especially since the whole game separates, is basically separate between good versus evil. Three character, all three characters have their counterparts, so it made sense to be play as them in each different storyline. So let's have three different storylines. We have two storylines. We have three different play styles. All right. Let's talk about these two brand new characters. Well, there's other new characters too, but there's two big new characters. First, we have the fan favorite, my second favorite Sonic character, Shadow the Hedgehog, originally known as Terios the Hedgehog, which was, which means a reflection of, so very similar to Shadow anyway. He was originally just going to be a generic doppelganger to Sonic. The concept was originally conceptualized in Sonic Adventure 1, but they decided to scrap that for the Chaos storyline. Here, they're like, okay, we're going to have Sonic has an alter ego that's evil, and he's bad, and he robs the Chaos Ceremony, and that's why he's framed by the government. However, they weren't a big fan of any of the earlier designs they're going for, until eventually we got the design that we have here. And obviously, this is one of the best designs. The main idea behind Shadow was to make him look as cool as Sonic, but in a different way. And that is how we got to the character we know and all love to this day. Shadow is easily one of the most fan-favorite characters in the franchise, and it's for a reason. He even starts off as an amazing character, so of course it makes sense for him to be an amazing character. Oh, and in uh, case you're wondering, Shadow the Hedgehog was created by... Of course, I don't have the information on top of my head. Uh, get to it. Uh, a lot of people, actually. Kazaki Hishio, Shiro Mikawa, Takashi Izuka, and Yuji Yukawa. And the art design was the final one you see in the right was Yuji Yukawa. But all four guys had some involvement in creating the uh, popular Ultimate Life Form. Shadow was voiced by David Humphrey, though there is some debate over whether he was originally voiced by Ryan Drummond. There is like, a couple of voice lines from Drummond as Shadow in the final game. You can hear them during the final boss fight. Only like five lines exist. David Humphrey was actually a friend of Ryan Drummond, and he got the part, and he's easily one of my favorite Shadow voice actors. And I know the fan favorite is Jason Griffith, but my adventure bias says that Humphrey's the best. There's something about his performance is very more nuanced. He doesn't go overly edgy like other voice actors would. He has that, like... He, you can tell in his voice that he's a little more complex than just being, oh, I'm evil. Because his character really isn't evil. There's been much interpretation that he says, oh, I hate everything, life sucks. But he's a kind of a flawed, interesting character. That's why we love Shadow. And, and I think Humphrey, as the first voice actor for Shadow and his first appearance, really sells his character dilemma. My memories are not real. It's still me, Shadow. And I will fulfill my promise to Maria. 
as you can probably tell she, this, by its design concept, Shadow was not supposed to be a mainstay character. He was only be a one-time thing. Oh, here's an evil Sonic that goes away. However, because of developing the character to try to make him appealing and look interesting, eventually he became a very nuanced and very unique character, more so than just a copy of Sonic, or a faker, if you will. He became so popular that soon after this game, like like four years later, he would get his own game, despite the fact that, like I said, he was only supposed to be in one game. Shadow still remains one of the most popular characters in the franchise, even though all he's been misused by Sega quite a bit. Since Knuckles could see it as one of the other main characters of Sonic Adventure 2, he also needed his own rival. And they decided, based on his old Sonic Jam profile, that it made sense that a femme fatale type character would be his rival. And that character was named Shadow. Well, no, her name it would became Rouge the Bat, who is a treasure hunter who is also a spy for the gun, I guess, which is the United States of Sonic America, wherever it is or Sonic lives, it's very confusing. We call it a Mobius, but it's not. It's Sonic's world? Whatever that means. Uh, Rouge the Bat went through more a uh, couple of different designs here as you can probably tell from these rough sheets until we finally got. Here's the final design for Rouge the Bat, who's also a very popular character in the Sonic community. And if you dis if it denies it, how dare you? This woman can fly, she's as strong as Knuckles, and is a femme fatale, seducing other characters into getting what she wants. Instead of having one love interest, she has two, Knuckles and Shadow, the Hedgehog. Being a treasure thief, she's only interested in one object, set, jewels. Especially the Chaos Emeralds. Uh, okay, oh, oh, sorry, I don't know what happened there. I think somebody took over my body. Uh, Rouge the Bat is a popular character in the Sonic community, and also for something else. If you couldn't tell, her design was, uh, questionable at most, especially near the heart area. The, to even sell this even more, her in-game model has jiggle physics, and a weird alternate outfit. But other than that, Rouge is a pretty interesting character who is voiced by a voice actor we've seen before in Second Adventure, Lonnie Manelli, Manelli, or whatever, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm sorry, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name, uh, who's also the voice director of the last game and this game. I despise anyone who takes tools. All the world's gems are mine to eat. Yeah. How is that? Perfect? Like me? He just showed my adventure bias, but I also think Lonnie is also one of the best Rouge voice actors. She's the most unique sounding one, and she gives the most nuance to the performance. Rouge is snarky, she's funny, she's entertaining as a character, also being sly, and can have emotional moments at times. A lot of other Rouge voice actors I feel like are one note, and they see the design and go, eh, we'll do that. Well, I feel like Lonnie's performance makes his character seem more unique than just some girl with, bag bad girl with some big old boobies. Which, you know, it's, it's nice, you know. We all love the Rouges and her nice assets, but overall, Rouge is a lot more than that. She's a charismatic treasure thief who really loves Master Emerald Shards. That's all I can say about her. Of course, she would be a rival to Knuckles since she likes jewels quite a lot. And of course, what's the biggest jewel? The Master Emerald. There's also some new voice actors for some characters, like this guy. This is Scott Dreer, who is our new voice for Knuckles, who would stay around for the entire adventure era. Scott Dreher might be my favorite Knuckles voice actor, though it's kind of hard to say since he has so many, but he gives the nuance the character deserves. Well, I feel like the last guy in Second Adventure 1, who I forgot his name, gave kind of bland and kind of a stoic performance, but Knuckles is a lot more than that. He's a guy who's pretty cool and chill sometimes, but he can get angry, he's a short temper, he can be snarky, and sometimes he doesn't want to do things that aren't relating to him. But he also can have his moments where he's a bit more uh, mature sometimes. He's a little naive, but overall he's got a good heart. And he's a little bit of a meathead. Just a tiny bit. And I feel like that you can tell that in his his performance here. It's pretty good. And I like his rivalry of Rouge in the game. It works very well. Like I said, he might be my favorite Knuckles voice actor. But it's kind of hard to say since there are so many Knuckles voice actors. Like, geez, Louise, Knuckles, why can't you be like Eggman and only have two game voice actors? Our next voice actor is Connor Bringus, who's the brother of Corey Bringus, who was the voice of Tails in Sonic Adventure and Sonic Shuffle. He takes over because his brother went through puberty, which you could tell easily in Sonic Shuffle. And he voices Tails, obviously. This must be the army. It's a secret military base that is reinforced and super strong. If I ask me for the first time to do something for him, I won't let him down. I won't give up. Connor is very similar to Corey, so I think he articulates a little better, so he's actually one of my most ideal Tails voice actors. If Tails didn't, voice actors didn't age, I would say he's 
I would like like to have this voice, but it's, an, it's kind of impossible, you know what I mean? Kids always grow, and sometimes you can't always get a good kid to voice actor, so it makes sense to have a uh, woman do the voice and make it sound like a little kid. But sometimes I can kind of tell that it's not a kid doing it, and that's kind of distracting. I'm always, well, I'm always curious why it's, Sonic Team's always so persistent that Tails be a kid, because you always... And sometimes a lot of people, especially later on, will think that Tails is actually a girl, which is kind of funny. Not that it really matters that much in the whole grand scheme of things, but I just think it's a little interesting tidbit to mention. Anyway, that's all the new voice actors for the new from the uh, characters here. There's actually a couple others, but Amy, Eggman, and Sonic have their voice actors for Sonic Adventure, and they do as well. Good job as any time they did in the last game. I like their voices quite a lot, as you probably could tell. We'll talk about some of the minor character voices, like Mora Angeline, who is the voice of new character Maria Robotnik. Shadow, I beg of you, please, do it for me. Mark Backey is our next voice actor. He does a couple of minor gun soldiers' voices. Like, they'll be like, oh, he's too strong! He's that guy. Most notably in the game, he's the voice of Gerald Robotnik. And later on in Sonic Heroes, he would become the first voice actor for Vector the Crocodile. Grateful humans who took everything away from me will feel my loss and despair. And our last new voice actor is Sue Wakefield, who did the amazing job of voicing the President's Secretary. Satellite communications are down. An emergency meeting has been called. For some reason, the options, this woman is, for some reason, a character you can choose to pick as a character you want to narrate. Yeah, one of the cool things about Sonic Adventure 2 is that you can have one of the characters narrate, and of course you can unlock some of them by using emblems in the game. So you start with the default ones and doing this weird spin, you can get this random secretary woman who narrates it, in case you really love the president's secretary. Some of the unlockable ones are Amy, Omochao, and Maria. The Maria, you have to get every emblem in the game in order to unlock her, so good luck with that. Sonic Adventure also has some jammin' music. From Jun Sonoi, who also did Song Adventure 1, the music in Song Adventure 2 is just as good, if maybe even better, than Adventure 1. Attention all units. But it's actually cooler than that, because each character's levels have a different type of theming. Sonic has a kind of an uplifting rock sound that we've heard in Song Adventure in most of the Sonic songs before. Tails also sounds similar, but it's less light. It's more lighter on the rock sound. It actually sounds more like traditional Sonic music without, you know, it sounds, it's rock, but not as rock, if that makes any sense. I don't know how to describe it. And Knuckles, uh, well, uh, every Knuckles level is a rap song. The guy who does the raps for Knuckles is Haunted P, who only really had Sonic Adventure 2 on his resume, and it's the only thing people know him for. He's kind of a controversial figure, trying to get money out of Sega, so they quote-unquote never paid him, even though they did. And also, he got into controversy with some YouTuber when he tried to solicit sex for them when he felt like he wasn't comp for to get enough money. This guy's really weird, uh, he but he's not a bad rapper! And he only really did the rapping part since all the music was composed by somebody else. Matter of fact, Song Adventure 2 added a couple of different composers for each of the different genres of music. Jutsunoi was the main one, obviously. But there was also Kenichi Tokio, Fumi Kamatune, and Tomio Otana. Alright, Eggman style music is similar to Tails and I guess Sonic, but more similar to Tails, where it's a little more technic, if that makes any sense. It has a little bit more beeps and bloops to it. I don't really know how to describe it. All the songs I played in Shadows levels are a little bit more on the grungy side. I'm not sure that's the best way to describe it, but they have a bit more of an edge to them. Well, well not really being that edgy. Sort of like, yeah, and there's a random vocalization sometimes in the background of the songs. Sometimes done by one of the, uh, the person who sings his theme. <laughs> Rouge has a pretty unique mu musical style, as her themes are all jazz, and they'll have also the singer of her song do some bit of riffing in the background sometimes for music. Her th themes are pretty relaxing, actually, for the most part, and actually makes it fun to look for the emeralds. Both her and Knuckles have the most unique music style in the game, and I like the fact that each character has their own unique themes in their levels, rather than just being the same level theme from the previous character, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Ha! 
Characters also have theme songs, which I mentioned in my previous video. However, I cover them at their credits, but since there's only two, three credits in this game, I mean, I can't cover all six of their main themes, so I'm going to cover them now during this section, alright? Sonic has the same theme as he did in Sonic Adventure 1, except it's being ruined on. Same vocals from Tony Harnell and all the composition, except it moves a little faster, and it kind of has a pop-punk vibe to it, rather than the, uh, what you call it, butt-rock version of the Adventure 1. I'm in the minority thinking the Adventure 2 version is better, in my opinion. I just like that style of music over, uh, the traditional one, though I can see why people like it. I think both versions are good, I just prefer the Adventure 2 version. Uh, Tails' theme is the same, but it sounds a little more cheesy than it did in the original game, at least in my opinion. It is the same voice performance. Actually, no, it's not. It's Cass Silver who performs the voice in Sonic Adventure 2, while it was Karen Blake did in Sonic Adventure 1. So there you go. <laughs> If you couldn't tell, Knuckles' theme sounds a little weird. It's also the same one for the previous games, except it's a remix, basically, from Unknown M.E. Unknown M.E. is one of the most infamous Sonic songs, it's, it's, it has very interesting lyrics. Now we got Haunted P doing some random riffing, and then a remix of the previous of Soul Singers in the background. It's iffy, and I prefer the regular one that's structured better, even though it is a little more cheesier. Amy also has the same theme for Sonic Adventure 1, it's pretty much the exact same, so I'm only skipping over it right now. Sorry, but it's not that interesting to talk about. Well, the instrumentation for Shadow's theme sounds pretty good. The vocals are not something that I really like. Throw It All Away is kind of a weird song to be uh, Shadow's theme. In fact, uh, a lot of people don't even remember this theme, even though it does appear in the game itself, obviously. It was composed by Fumi Katamantuni, and it was performed by Everett Bradley. I just don't really care for this. The lyrics were also written by Shinobio Shendo, which is just about him trying to throw it all away. This is also the end theme for the Dark storyline. I'm not a big fan of it, and it didn't return as Shadow's theme in any other game since this. And honestly, All Hell Shadow, all I Am All of Me, and everything else just sounds way better than this. Or than the uh, background. The background sounds good. I'm not a big fan of what the vocals are doing. It just, I don't, I don't like it. Rouge's song, Fly in the Freedom, which is composed by Fumi Kamatuni and lyrics written by Shinobo Shindu. And the vocals were done by Tabitha, was it Tabitha Fair and Todd Cooper. So we got a nice little co-production there. Her theme is fine. It fits the character as well as her level themes, the jazzy feel. It's about her flying in the freedom and trying to get her way. It's pretty smooth, much like the character herself. And it'd be stay her theme for the rest of the franchise. Because it works. It's the most exciting theme in the world, but it works for the character. <laughs> E-G-G-M-A-N, or Eggman, is the theme of Eggman. Don't know what the acronym is for, but Eggman is the Eggman, if you couldn't tell. Which, I'm not sure if it's a reference to the Beatles song, I'm the Walrus, but who knows. If you couldn't tell, this song was composed by June Sinoise, and sounds very similar to Final Egg from Sonic Adventure. The, the, the lyrics and singing were done by Paul Shortonino, and this theme, even though it's a little goofy, it rocks and it fits Eggman's personality. After all, he's an egotist, so of course this song will be named after himself. Live and Learn, the main theme of Sonic Adventure 2, is iconic as all hell. It was a th the, tr the song used for the trailer for Sonic and Smash Brothers Brawl. It was in the Japanese version of Sonic X. It's been reused countless times in other Sonic games. And it's going to appear in the new Sonic 3 movie, which is also kind of an adaptation of Sonic Adventure 2 itself. The theme is amazing. It sounds great. And it's about the uh, final boss battle, which we'll get to when we get to it. 
Uh, of course, it was done by Crush40, and I talked about Crush40 in my previous video, so go check them out. I covered most of the main stuff, the pre-stuff for getting the game. So let's get into the game. Here's what the estate select looks like, by the way, because I'm not going to really showcase it that much. Ray's top secret weapon, Project Shadow, was stolen from a military base located on the deserted island in the southern seas. This incident increased worldwide terrorist activities. Sonic the Hedgehog was arrested. The adventure for truth leads to the incidents that shock the entire world. The story takes our hero Sonic from the Earth and into outer space. Sonic Adventure 2. Hero Side Story. Farewell, Sonic. Forever. Why do you say Pharrell Sonic like he's gonna die? He doesn't die in this game. What is he talking about? Before I even get into the actual game, I gotta talk about these things. These are recaps. Every time you go back to the story mode and you, uh, are going back to your level, the character whose level it is will recap it and... Of course, they'll be voiced over. This isn't Sonic Adventure 1, but the way the actual characters are talking about the situations gives you a lot of details and storylines, and I quite like it a lot, so I'll be playing clips from them here and there. Some military troops suddenly showed up saying they were looking for me. Looks like they might be taking me for a ride somewhere. Hey, what's this? Handcuffs? Wait a minute, what are you talking about? I'm not a deserter from any military facility. I thought it may be some kind of joke, but this isn't fun. I gotta get out of here. If you couldn't tell, uh, the military thought that Sonic was a criminal, and Sonic was kind of shocked, and he just got captured. They're taking him in a cargo jet, which we know as Sigma Alpha 2, which you couldn't tell the initials there is SA2, pretty creative. But of course, Sonic's like, no to that, and he jump breaks out of the plane, because he does not like flying in planes. Also, you can see in the Dreamcast version, Sonic has his regular shoes here, because I guess they forgot to edit it. And of course, the Valve version, they put back his regular uh, soap shoes. Budget flights, no food or movies, I'm out of here. I like running better. Yeah! Our first level is City Escape. Quite possibly one of the most popular Sonic levels right behind Green Hill Zone. And it is kick ass. First thing Sonic is doing is rips apart part of the plane and then snowboards down the uh, streets of San Francisco, which is actually makes a perfect level for Sonic since it's so steep of all the roads there. So it actually works very well. It almost feels like something a city was designed for Sonic to run around in. It's like, wait, this city actually exists? Yeah, it does. And Sonic is trying to escape. Now, yeah, Sonic is a wanted criminal by the government, or GUN, which is a government force that does a bunch of shady stuff, including capturing blue hedgehogs they think stole Chaos Emerald. What makes this level even more unique is the fact that having a regular instrumental theme in the background, it has an actual full-on song written by, well, Crush 40 doing it in the background, or June Snow, if you will, and vocals by Tony Harnell and Ted Poley. doesn't really tell me which one did what. It just says both of them done, have done it, so I guess they're both vocalizing there. Of course, we know they've done previous voicing in the previous song, so there's nothing too exciting there. Uh, the theme is so iconic, this is actually one of the most reused Sonic themes. Probably the most second most well-known song in the game itself. The song is about Sonic running and trying to be free, basically. Also, it references the main title by just screaming, Live and Learn at one point, which is, you know, pretty great. Everyone pretty much loves City Escape because it is an amazing level and the theme is amazing. Anyway, let's talk about the new enemies in the, the, the level. Keep these enemies in your head because you're going to see a lot of these enemies. There's not a whole lot of enemies in Sonic Metro 2. They reuse some of them. The biggest thing is this is a robot. It's not made by Eggman. This is a GUN Hunter. Yes, these are robots made to specifically catch blue hedgehogs. And they're all after Sonic. Uh, these are unique because they actually drop chaos drives, which is what they're powered by, instead of animals. Of course, the chaos drives can be used in the Chow Garden, but we'll get to the Chow Garden when we get to it. These guys will slowly put their gun at Sonic and shoot at them, him. And that's about it. You'll see these guys throughout pretty much all the levels, though, since gun is pretty much everywhere in Sonic Metro 2. There's also a gun beetle. These are just little guys that float around, and basically they're used for homing attack chains. There are some variations. This one you see right here is the mono beetle. There's also the Spark Beetle. These are similar to the Spinner enemy that had the same ability, where it will stay like it's like the Mono Beetle, but sometimes it will have some electricity around it. So be careful, or you'll die if you hit it. There's also the Spring Beetle, which is you know a beetle with a spring on it. So when you jump onto it, it bounces up. 
you actually can't really defeat these enemies unless you use the weird item called the magic hands. So the first thing you'll see in City Escape is obviously the snowboarding section, which is just the beginning part where we're snowboarding down the area. Nothing can really hurt you, but you can't get stopped. Basically teaches you the momentum of the game, so without having to worry about get, stopping really that much or getting hit. There's a lot of trick ramps, which if you hold A, much like in Sonic Measure 1, you can do tricks. Now tricks are more important in this game since it re represents your rank at the end. The ranking is based on how many points you get, not how fast you beat the level, and of course every time you die you lose all your points. While it's more linear than Adventure 1, there is still alternate pathways to take. In fact, if I had a power-up, I can take a little alternate route, well not a baby alternate route, and do stuff like that. Sonic also has a new move called Somersault. When station, when moving, Sonic will do a, a, a Somersault, which is kind of a slow roll forward that breaks apart crates right doing a Spin Dash. Since Spin Dash uh, spamming was kind of a problem the first game, kind of broke it. They made it so that you have to stay still in order to do a spin dash, and not you're able to do a somersault. It actually bounces out a bit much. You think I would, you people complain about it, but it actually just feels more natural that way anyway. So yes, Sonic can do trick ramps even after he's not even on a snowboard, and the level is pretty well designed. There's unique areas like staircases, grinding rails, and even like little ramps that you can use to get power-ups. Like here, if you spin dash off it, you can get a one-up or a speed shoes. Most of the uh, items are basically the same as the other games, nothing too interesting here. Electric Shield, Regular Shield, 1-Up, Speed Shoes, and Invincibility. City Escape is a very well-designed level. While it is a little linear, there's a lot of unique sections that are very memorable, and each one has unique things going on with ads in the background. Like this part where Sonic just runs down this building in a really cool epic shot. I love this so much as a child, I cannot tell you how much I did. Also, Sonic has the ability to swing on these poles, which are kind of annoying. The poles kind of suck, so we'll skip past them. There are a little more tricky sections, like these to teach you platforming with these little things bobbing up and down out of these bottomless pit here. Somebody really needs to fix that bottomless pit there. And there's some enemies that can come out you and trick you. But overall, it's pretty fun. This level also introduces the grinding ability. It introduces you in a nice way where there's no way you can fall off. Basically, what you, you have to turn with the to make Sonic go faster. It has you realistic physics there. And by holding B, he goes faster, but doesn't go fast when he's on a turn, so you gotta pay attention. Again, the level, the gun is like, screw Sonic, we're going to chase after you with a giant truck. This is the gun truck chase. Uh, basically, all you got to do is hold down, but it's also rings and tricks to do. So that's the idea of this section. Well, it is a set piece. It's also a set piece that has options to get additional points as well as additional Easter. But Sonic outrun the gun truck, and he's finally in the goal ring. Let's see what rank I get. I hope it's something good. I'm pretty sure it's an A rank, because that's a pretty nice score. B? One thing you'll notice about ranking, trying to A rank Sonic Adventure 2 is that this is the first game to add ranks, but they're also kind of hard to do. In Sonic stages, you gotta make sure you perform pretty well. Make sure you get every trick, every enemy chain, every type of ring you can get, because it doesn't matter how fast you are, because the time bonus isn't that big. Being that even stuff like City Escape, you can get B or even E sometimes, even if you don't play that bad. And with every level complete, you also get an emblem. There are 180 emblems to complete, get, since there's like five alternate for levels to each level. They are not necessary to complete, but they essentially, Mission 1 is a regular relic level, but you have to A rank him in order to get every emblem, since characters have an A, uh, a rank emblem, so if every level little section is A ranked, you get another emblem. So keep that in mind, you 100% the game, since you do get bonuses for doing so. We'll get to that at the end of the game. Essentially, Mission 1 is a regular mission. Mission 2 is to collect 100 rings, which you have to do in a certain amount of time in order to get A rank. Third mission is to find the Lost Shell, which you need a certain upgrade later on to get, by using this weird little ancient uh, shrine in order to whistle at, in order to find the Shell. That's what's also time ranked, so the ring, 100 ring and Shell are time ranked, so you don't have to worry about getting a high score. The fourth mission is a time mission, ready to beat the level in a certain amount of time which is uh, not too difficult for the most part. And the fifth mission is hard mode, which will slightly change the level, mostly adding a bunch of more harder enemies, and sometimes will add bombas pits, but most of all, the stage won't be changed that much. And once you do all five, you can get alternate bonus stuff, like emblems and all sorts of goodies. What a persistent bunch of hardheads. Just who are they really after anyway? Not only are they chasing me day and night, but now they brought in this huge robot to capture me. Yes, they're really determined to get me this time, but do they really believe this is gonna work? I'll show them some mad skills. Just give me three minutes to bring it up. This game of tag is boring. I'm out of here. Hmm. Finally decided to show up, eh? Okay, bring it on! Alright, we get to our first boss, which is not the first thing we do as Sonic. It is F-S-6-T Bigfoot. This little guy likes to fly. However, it doesn't matter if you can fly now, because I work alone. Essentially, all you gotta do is jump on these crates and just hit them. 
Now, you gotta wait usually for him to do a certain missile attack, but you can just kind of jump at him pretty easily from these height, and you can get him down pretty easily. This boss fight isn't too hard, plus a bunch of rings here if you know what to do. Zong gets a pretty good amount of height, and while there's a way to beat him, you can do it in an easier way by doing what I'm doing right here. Just keep on jumping at him, and eventually, he'll fall and die. Well, he doesn't die, actually. After defeating Bigfoot, Sonic knows this is a weird thing on top of the uh, guy. I think he just landed there, maybe, I'm not sure. It's a character that looks very similar to him, holding up a Chaos Emerald. It all starts with this. A jewel containing the ultimate power. Now I know what's going on! The military has mistaken me for the likes of you! So, where do you think you're going with that ever- Chaos Control! So as you can see, Sonic is not too happy with meeting his doppelganger, who basically is the reason why the military is chasing after him this whole time in the game. And he gets pretty pissed off, especially since Shadow has a new power he's never seen before. Using the Chaos Emerald, Shadow is able to use Chaos Control, which allows him to warp through space and time, basically. It's a very broken ability. And of course, Sonic gets rearrested after this whole thing, so this is all for nothing. So after that, we start the Knuckles portion of the game. You see, he's arguing with the new character, Rouge the Bat, who wants his Master Emerald. Obviously, Knuckles is not going to give out the Master Emerald to anybody, since, you know, it's his gem to protect. They're now on Angel Island, by the way, because I guess they decided not to model that, so they're using a random desert area. It's kind of confusing. Also, the Master Emerald is a lot smaller in this game than it is in previous games. That that matters, because as soon as Knuckles rambles on about how great the Master Emerald is, Eggman decides to steal it. Well, he wants to steal Chaos Emeralds, but the Master Emerald has the same wavelength and property as a Chaos Emerald, so I guess he thought it was one. He's like, well, I'll take it. And Knuckles is like, Not if I can help it. So yes, Knuckles destroys the Master Emerald, and he's just nonchalant about it, because he's like, eh, I'm just gonna uh, find the pieces anyway. I can restore it, or it be out of your two hands, and because it belongs to me, alright? I'm Knuckles the Kid, but you can call me Knuckles. Once again, <laughs> the Master Emerald was stolen from Angel Island. The thief turns out to be this know-it-all Batgirl of all things. When that Batgirl was within my reach, who do you think shows up? Yep, that's right, Eggman. He came just in time to spoil my plan, and even tried to take the Master Emerald. I managed to break the Master Emerald into pieces before Eggman managed to escape. Now I have to find the pieces. That Batgirl is after the pieces as well. I have to collect them all and put the Emerald back together quickly. Knuckles' stage is Wild Canyon, and much like in Song of Metro 2, why is it Metro 2? Metro 1, he's got to find three missing emerald pieces. However, sometimes the levels will have some different elements in them. Sometimes I'll have to find a key, but yeah, it doesn't happen very often. So, if essentially in the level, you got to search around, and there's monitors here to help you. you can press B on the monitor, and they'll tell you stuff. Press it again, you'll get more hints. However, the more hints you get, the less points you'll get. And that matters, you want to get that A rank. Overall, it's not too hard to get A rank if you know what you're doing. Uh, Knuckles first stage is actually pretty small. You got this little area here You can go up this air vent and there's two little side passages and that's about it Overall, it's actually pretty easy to find the emerald However, one of the biggest challenges between this and adventure one is that your emerald radar only goes off for one emerald The first one it wants you to collect However, you can still find other emeralds even with you're not tracking that if you see one of those emeralds Make sure to pick it up because that emerald will give you extra points if you collect one out of order Overall, it's not too hard to find the emeralds. However, there are a hundred different places they can be in. After all, it is hard to find them, but not too hard. As you see, I found one out of order. And overall, this stage is pretty basic and easy. Knuckles controls pretty well. He was going to upgrade to uh, his his performance in Adventure One. He moves faster. He has good, his punch attacks work better. There's a lot actually stuff to punch, and he has a dive attack, which is also very useful for getting down the ground very quickly. He can also use that for his digging ability. Knuckles will get a lot of upgrades later on in the game. We'll get to the upgrades when we get to them in the level, since they're kind of unique in this game, to say the least. 
There are three new enemies in this level, known as the Gunhawk. It's kind of similar to the Beetle, except it kind of moves around a little bit, unlike the Beetle. It's a lot bigger, and it shoots, and yeah, it's not very good, actually. It kind of sucks its job. There is the Rhino Jet, which is a stationary, uh, not really stationary, it's a grounded vehicle that kind of ram tries to ram into your character on the ground. These are very big, and they're pretty easy to take out, too, so nothing too challenging there. And lastly, there's Rhino Spike. This is the Rhino Bot, but with spikes, so you can't jump on top of it. But you can punch it, or use any attacks that aren't really jumped. As I mentioned in my song thing, I said that Knuckles' songs are all rap numbers, and they're all unique rap songs. So the song in Wild Canyon is called Kick the Rock, and has some very questionable lyrics. So yes, one of the lyrics is, Yeah, Rouge, she's sexy and smooth. This is a line in a Sonic game. Raid E for everybody. Maybe it's E10 and up, but who the hell really cares? E10 up sucks. That's all I can say. Uh, yeah, the, the rap songs are all, by the way, from the perspective of Knuckles. Most of the time they are, but here's the, the rap. Hunted P, my favorite rapper of all time, will be like, This is Knuckles! Just to let you know who is rapping. Knuckles quite literally name drops himself in his own raps. Also, the level design in Sonic Adventure 2 is much better than Adventure 1, since these levels were quite literally designed for Knuckles to climb around in. So you, you use a lot more vert, vert, verticality here, a lot more exploration, and a lot more unique hiding spots. Like I said, there's 100 spots in each level, which is pretty well done, actually. These levels for newcomers may be a little difficult. However, there's only a couple areas. I recommend running around a bunch of the level and just exploring. You will find your emerald piece eventually. They will be found. Yeah, this is perfect. Anyway, Tails is flying to this island called Prison Island, which is near the San Francisco, I guess. He's going to save Sonic for prison because he saw it on satellite TV. I don't know why Tails feels the need to have to describe what t t TV source he watches, but it doesn't matter. Tails is like, Sonic can't be a bad guy, he's my best friend, so I'm going to save him. But someone's already there to try to save him. That being Amy, who forgot to bring her hammer because Eggman's about to attack her. So Tails decides that he's going to save her by instead of getting out of his tornado plane and attacking like he usually does, he decides that, you know what, my tornado too, we're going to make you transform into a mech. My name is Miles Crowley, but everyone calls me Tails. I was watching TV, and just happened to catch the news. I was shocked to see Sonic on TV. Sonic was arrested for something really terrible, which isn't like Sonic. I couldn't believe it was true, so I hopped in my new tornado and headed straight for Prison Island. And guess who I ran into? Eggman. He's up to his evil ways again, chasing Amy. That can't be good. Okay, time to break out the new tornado and save Amy. So our boss fight is with Dr. Eggman himself. This is our first rival fight of the game. And essentially all you gotta do is put a bunch of bullets into the Eggman's walker here, which isn't too hard. The first time here, really, just kind of want to mash it and kind of walk, walk around him. And when you get close, you do a little punch attack. So yeah, other than that, it's pretty easy, and that's it. Hey, how's that? And I'll let you go, but the next time we meet, you won't be so lucky. So Tails is like, Amy, what the heck are you doing on this island? And Amy's like, what do you think? I'm here to rescue Sonic. And I guess she kind of does because the next cuts and we see, she does save Sonic. I guess I don't know what Tails was doing. It kind of showcases that maybe Tails wasn't meant to be a playable character at one point since even though he goes in to save Sonic, it, the cutscene shows that Amy's the one that does it. And it doesn't really matter too much. Okay. It's kind of funny, like, Tails is going ahead, and like, Amy's like, I want to help Sonic, I want to save him. So you think Tails will get to her, him first, but then we get to the uh, next cuts. The person who's saving Sonic is Amy, not Tails. I wonder what Tails is doing this whole time. Maybe he's just playing around his tornado plane. Alright, our stage three is Prison Lane, our first Tails stage. Tails is a mech character, which is basically designed around Gamma's gameplay, where you're basically shooting a bunch of enemies. This time we're shooting a bunch of gun enemy robots, because well, most of the game is gun robots, if you can't tell from already. Essentially, we're inside Prison Island, and there's a bunch of little prisons we gotta break through by shooting all the robots that are guarding the entrances, and try to rack up as much combo as we can by creating chains. You hold down the, your action button, 
and there's a bunch of enemies nearby or other items, you can hold them and there'll be numbers. And the more numbers you get, the higher points you get. This is important for the score system, but it's a pretty fun way of doing stuff. Now, this can feel a little janky at first, but if you play these, you realize that these mechs actually have pretty good momentum. I know it is kind of weird to play as Tails inside of a mech and not outside, especially since you're probably moving a lot faster with these areas without this mech. But whatever, Tails is like, I'm going to walk, I want to take my tornado everywhere because I love my plane, and here I go. There's this one section where you just got to wait as you go up this elevator and shoot up these bad nicks. Now, if you want, you can jump in front of it, do a little tiny bit of a skip but it's not a whole lot here this level is kind of slow there is a little bits of things you can do to make it faster there's a little bit of secrets too but nothing too interesting overall while the mech stages i like them i'm not the biggest fan of the way tails levels are in comparison to eggman's which is kind of weird for the most part i do prefer eggman's levels depending on which one it is though sometimes it can be a little harder and challenging here's a good place to get some items by the way if you're playing this there's annoying areas where you have to go behind you in order to shoot this one robots there which is, yeah, it's kind of tricky if you don't know what you're doing. But if you do know, you do know. Overall, there's not a whole lot to say about this level, actually. You get a last room where you get all these enemies to shoot. And keep in mind, there's one right behind you, so shoot it, because you don't want to see it gloating in the back. Prison Lane features some new enemies, like the Gun Hornet. These little guys will kind of sit there. And they're mostly for the uh, the mech characters, because they're ch like chains you can get off their little attacks there. They will shoot you, they're very slow, so you want to make sure you hit all the little things, and then you get a nice big bonus. We also have a gun wing. These are guys that are like the Beatles, but they fly around faster and will shoot more bullets at you, so they can be a little tricky-dicky. And the level also features gun hunters and mono beetles. Very good! So while Tails is doing that, Sonic's just waiting in prison, being very impatient, when, of course, Amy is the one who wants to break him out. There's also a weird dialogue where Amy said that she got here by catching a ride with Tails. You know, Tails first meets her on the island, so I don't know how that happened. Uh, so, kind of confusing. Probably part of the original dialogue where Tails wasn't a playable character, but who really knows. Sonic is angsting in here because he's mad that some random hedgehog who looks like him got him arrested. And he gets only excited when he hears that Amy knows who he is. That black hedgehog? Did you see it? Where is it now? If I tell you, will you marry me? No way! I thought I had you this time! One thing I gotta mention about these cutscenes is that they're mo-capped for some reason. Those sometimes like characters will do weird animations. I guess it's not as extreme as the Adventure 1 animations, but sometimes it is kind of funny to see. Anyway, Sonic's gonna run out because he learns that Shadow is working with Eggman. So he decides to go out, though Amy's curious about the writing on the walls, which we'll learn about later. But Sonic, of course, didn't write them because he is not a person to write math equations on the wall. Amy should have known that. Wait for me, Sonic! He's such a brat sometimes. Our next level is Metal Harbor. What in the world is Amy doing here? <laughs> Never mind that. I need to focus on finding that black hedgehog who looks like my shadow. He's somewhere on this island. I know it. I'm wasting my time here. I'll trick the military guards and bust out of this joint. Does this mean that I'm a deserter now? Metal Harbor is an awesome stage. We're outside the military base and we're running across their little airstrip field. And it is pretty awesome. This stage has a great sense of speed. There's a lot of cool shortcuts you can take. Cool enemy chains. And the music is amazing. This is also where you'll get your first upgrade of Sonic. Since you need a light speed dash, all you gotta do is go up here with this little pulley and you'll find one. It is the light speed shoes. Sonic can now do the light speed dash. It works a lot different than it does in Sonic Adventure 1. Over there you have to charge up with a spin dash here. You just press the action button and Sonic will go super fast and along the trailer rings. This upgrade adds so much to the game, it's insane. The new light speed dash actually makes him feel like you're at light speed. You don't have to stop, do a little spin dash. No, Sonic just goes with the rings and it adds a lot to the game in just a little minor way. It's just pretty amazing. Metal Harbor is just a fun stage, a bunch of little fun things in there. The way it's structured is just great. Metal Harbor introduces a very unique enemy known as the Blue Eagle, which is a little jet that flies around the sky. It will shoot at Sonic for the most part. However, you can kind of hit them, they're in range. It's easier to hit them if you're playing as a mech character, but they're not a whole lot of these guys in the game. You think there's a background element, but no, they're actually enemies that you can destroy. This is the Gold Beetle. It's not an exclusive enemy to Metal Harbor, but you have seen it in the footage, as well as City Escape. These guys appear in literally every level in only one area. They'll pop up for a split second, not split second, but for a couple seconds. And at that time, you gotta shoot them to get a bunch of points. And other than that, if you don't, they'll disappear, and that's about it. They don't have any other 
unique abilities other than just appearing and giving you a lot of points. And that's about it for enemies in Metal Harbor. There, there is a Mono Beetle. At one point, you eventually come to this area for a rocket, and there'll be a time countdown, and you got to get to the top in the amount of time. It could be a little trickier said than done, so keep in mind you might die. Especially since in order to get the actual A rank here, you got to go to that upper rank, which is hard enough to get to the regular switch here. So trying to get to the upper one can be a pain in the butt. Once you get on the rocket, Sonic gets launched to the sky. Eventually, he takes the little piece off and decides to that it's okay to dive down into the sky below. Of course, remember, Sonic does not take fall damage. We've seen that constantly time and time again. He gets another snowboard and he gets to slide down this nice little area where you can collect some bonus items. And that's the end of Metal Harbor. After running around Metal Harbor, Sonic makes it to the jungle of Prison Island where he finds a familiar face. Hey, that's... That blue hedgehog again of all places. I found you, Faker. Faker? I think you're the fake hedgehog around here. You're comparing yourself to me? Huh? You're not even good enough to be I'll my... I'll make you eat those words. Busting out of jail was no problem. And I found Shadow, too. He won't escape me this time. There's no time to play games. You won't even get the chance. So the fight against Shadow here is really janky. Uh, it's pretty unclear how you're supposed to hit him, other than the fact that homing attacks don't seem to work. So try everything but the homing attacks, and just try not to fall off the edge, because homing attacks, you can easily fall off this edge here. Uh, he's actually pretty easy to defeat, it's just very unclear what moves are the best to use here. Just don't homing attack in him and use your other moves, and you should be able to feed him. Try spinning, try struggler jumping, and you should be fine. And be careful. Other than that, he's pretty easy. Not bad for an imposter. Do you know who I am? So after their grueling fight, Shadow gets a call from Eggman saying that he's gonna blow up the entire island. So now Sonic's gotta rush to get out of there and save Amy and Tails as well. Back here right now before the island blows up with you on it! Blows up? Cat Shadow, Better get going, and fast! So that's your next stage, Green Forest. And yes, Green Forest has a time limit, but the time limit is like 8 minutes long, which means you have to be really bad this game in order for that to run out, because, you know, it's levels like 2 minutes long, so you shouldn't have any problem beating it. Green Forest is a really fun level with some kick-ass music. You're running around the forest, dodging all the gun bots, and doing unique tricks in a nice forest zone as well as grinding on some vines, as well as swinging on vines like Sonic is doing here. There's a couple bad next to this level, the only new one is the Bomb Beetle. This guy is a beetle, he flies in a circle, and he drops bombs. The bombs are annoying, but he's pretty easy to defeat, because he's just a regular beetle after all. The other enemies are a Gun Hunter, Mono Beetle, and Rhino Spike, all of which are pretty basic to defeat, as I mentioned them before, and they appear quite frequently in the level. There's a lot of different chains to do, and a lot of unique tricks to do. There's a lot of go inside trees, we run inside of vines, it's just a fun level. We've seen pretty much all there is to see about this level. It was a good level, there's not a whole lot to talk about here, so let's move on to the next part. Or in this section here where you're about to fall to your death for all these platformers falling down. But that's okay, since if you go down, you can find a spring and get springed all the way to the very- That was cool! So, Prison Island blows up, so I guess everyone who's on there died, which is a shame. I know there's a bunch of robots, but there's probably some gun people there, too. Like, jeez Louise, Eggman killing people much? Anyway, the next stage is Pumpkin Hill. There's not really much of a storyline here. At Knuckles is like, I gotta go find some emerald pieces here at this haunted pumpkin yard. Following the faint signal I was getting from the Master Emerald, I found myself in this rural canyon. Sure feels creepy. But I'm not afraid of ghosts. I have to find the pieces of the Master Emerald now. Pumpkin Hill has three new enemies and one returning enemy being the Gunhawks. So let's go over the three new enemies before we talk about the level itself. The first enemy is Boo. Yeah, this ghost is named Boo. Very creative, Sega. But since Boo is not that creative of a name, and Boo has already been named for a ghost character in Sonic's rival series, Mario. These guys, though, are demented as all heck. I mean, he has black teeth and really creepy eyes. These guys are mostly known for their appearance in Sonic X, where they possessed Amy that one time. Uh, these guys, you can't really defeat. They'll grab you, and they're kind of annoying, and you just gotta hit them in order for them to stop you that, and they'll disappear. That's about it. These are actually just regular ghosts, by the way. They're not gun things or Eggman's bad nicks. These are just regular ghosts just trying to haunt the heck of Knuckles and Sonic. 
Next we got Boom Boo. Boom Boo. Boom Boo. Dressing that three times fast. These guys are really annoying, actually. They're like big things, and they earn the way. You punch them, and then a the regular boo comes out of them, and they get rid of your rings. So, yeah, it's kind of annoying. I hate these guys. Next, we've got Rhino Cannon. These are just Rhino bots that have cans on their heads. Apparently, there is no good actual image of these, so this is the best one that Sonic Wookiee's given us. Quite lovely. They're unnoteworthy, obviously. That's probably why they only have one image of them. The first thing you'll do in Pumpkin Hill is go straight ahead, because you'll find yourself a power-up. Because, yes, an upgrade's right there. The Shovel Claw works the same as it did in Sonic Adventure, so we can do a dive to do for that. You can only sh shovel in the sides of the mountains in Sonic Adventure 1, but here you can shovel in the ground, too. And one of these emeralds are always going to be in the ground for now, at this point on. I'm pretty sure, at least. Uh, Pumpkin Hill is can be a little tricky, since it's a lot bigger. It's also the most iconic Knuckles stage, with its song, A Ghost Pumpkin Soup, about Knuckles not being scared of ghosts, but things might be creeping behind him. There's three different areas, towers, if you will. There's one with a haunted house, there's one with a bunch of mountainous pumpkin area, the patch, there's one train yard with all these little bomb areas. There's also little pumpkin giant head things in the background, as well as two, and I think three you can go on to. Essentially, there's rockets that take you up to the top of them. So what I want to do is just go up the top, see if the emerald goes off, and then go to the other of the three areas. So it's pretty basic, actually. The only problem is that if you might find out that an emerald will be in a trickier location than you think when they're in the, your radar, but you can't seem to get them. Being a fan of Halloween, this stage does a lot for me, actually. It's quite fun, actually, even though it's hard to find some of the emeralds once in a while. Though, you can always reset to get a better score. Actually, if you get stuck, I actually recommend that. Or using a guide for some of the emeralds, since the miners will always steer you in the right direction. Though, it's not too hard, actually. You just know they can reset the game if you need to. Or use some hints online. Or just do a little exploration, you know? You might find it in the most uncanny of spots. <laughs> Anyway, we get to a TV broadcast where Eggman makes a very special announcement. You may have seen this clip before in other forms of weird things. Uh, this is the only problem with the game, is these pre-ordered humans look awful. The pre-ordered cutscenes look like absolute garbage in this game. There's only like two in the entire game, so I have no idea why they even thought it was a good idea. Because the humans look like crap, it looks like poop, basically. So essentially, Eggman's making an announcement. You see, he's found this thing called the Space Colony Arc, and he's going to use it to shoot a hole in the moon. So the moon has a hole in it, and people are all scared. Half the moon is gone! Uh, the moon is repaired in, like, Shadow the Hedgehog, which is a game that comes out pretty much after this game. So, uh, yeah, the moon does not appear broken in most of the Sonic games. According to Takashi Azuka, is it because the moon's facing the other way? Which is kind of a funny reason. They could have said, oh yeah, we forgot about that tidbit. We didn't want to make the moon look weird in every game and never explain it every time. They decided, like, oh, oh, it's just in the other direction. So Sonic Team, I guess, are looking at that and they're like, we must stop Eggman. They, Sonic realizes that that's the reason he must be looking for the Chaos Emeralds since, you know, the Chaos Emeralds could only do that much damage. Tails that showcases his emerald that he got from Station Square. You see, Station Square was so happy, even after getting flooded, that Tails saved him that one time, that they decided to give him an emerald. I have no idea why they decided to give him an emerald of all things, even though Sonic saved the day, but that one time he defeated Eggman was way bigger than the time that Sonic destroyed Perfect Chaos from destroying their entire city. You know, I guess it did. Uh, the timeline doesn't really add up there, but okay. The cops are after them, so they all run away. Tails just announced his evil plans to take over the world. He just blew up half the moon. That brings us to Tails' second mission, Mission Street. Tails is going to travel through the station. I'm not sure what the city's called. I was called San Francisco from this point on, as I've been doing for the video. As he travels throughout the city's streets in order to escape police persecution, since they're all after them. But Tails in particular right now, because he's wanting... I mean, they literally have a sign up there for him. They want him that bad. There's only one new enemy here, the Laser Hunter. They shoot lasers instead of bullets, I guess? They're about the same as the other gun <laughs> bot, but, you know, just lasers. So they saw The only other enemies are a Blue Falcon and you know, those three Hornet thing. And other than that, there's not a whole lot to go off of there. There's not a lot of enemies in this. 
but you will find a new upgrade. After this bridge here collapses and you go to the left side here, you'll find the booster. This allows Tails to glide a bit with his little mech. Of course, you could fly with his two tails, but whatever. Tails forgets that he can not, does not have to be his mech all the time, but that's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of this stage. Well, it's not bad by itself. However, if you have tried 100% in this game, the freeze in this stage caused me the most problems. For some reason, I kept getting the B rank every single time. I so, for the most part, this is just a section of Tales of the San Francisco area where we're playing on top of the bridge rather than just being in the main city. Of course, this is the Golden Gate Bridge. It actually makes for a pretty well sunk set piece, to be exact. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Overall, this mission street, it, it can be a little annoying, but there's some little tricks, tips and tricks to get for this level to make it a little easier. During this bridge section, of course, you got a bunch of pillars to shoot and get some extra points, as well as other things you can shoot, like that little balloon, which allows you to shoot up there and get the uh, health pack. Also, this section here can be a lot easier. On the right side, you want to go to this gun fit, fit box and shoot it and press that blue, the yellow, white button. That way, you don't have to worry about later to redoing this entire section here. Because if you don't do that, you will have to redo it. Once you get up all the way to the top here, you can just glide yourself down and skip parts of the level. Which is actually pretty nice, since that area is kind of annoying. So once all that's done, you'll be in the regular street area. A lot of enemies will fall from the ceiling, including the ceiling itself, so watch out for that. If you're fast enough, you won't be bothersome. But once we're done, we get to the goal and... Following the signal from the Master Emerald, I found myself deep inside this camp. This place looks like a deserted mine of some kind. Most of it's underwater now. It's gonna be tough finding the pieces of the Master Emerald here. No time to complain about it. I have to find the pieces of the Master Emerald quickly. This is Stage E, Aquatic Mine, a Knuckles level. I wonder what Knuckles stories where it's going to be, since for most part his levels don't have that much throw, throw line. They're unique design levels, but the story behind them is, there must be some Master Emerald pieces here. <laughs> That's about it. Of course, he connects to the rest of the gang pretty soon after this level, and then he becomes more integral to the story. But at this point, there doesn't seem to be a lot going on. I wonder what, if there's a lot of different changes that have happened. Maybe Rouge is more involved in his storyline and less of Eggman's storyline because of all this stuff. But who really knows? Not that it really matters. Anyway, Aquatic Mine is a mine that's underwater, and you control the level by pressing on different switches. There's three different levels, high, high, medium, and low, and depending on which one, it depends on which level it is. Now, as you can probably see here, I found one value of meaning. There actually isn't that many enemies in this level, if any at all. There's the Boo, Boom Boo, a Cannon Spike, and yeah, that's about it, really. There's I think it's something else, but like I said, it doesn't really matter. They're only in one area where there's enemies. They kind of suck. Anyway, what you want to do in this level, actually, is to go over here, when it's all the way down to the lowest point, and you want to dive. Now, Knuckles can swim. Pressing A and B will make him go up and down. If you hold one, he'll dive straight down or go all the way up. Actually, swimming mechanics are quite smooth in this game, oddly enough, despite the fact that only two characters can swim. Yes, Knuckles can't swim. Sonic can't. I actually really like the way this game does water. Only one character has deal, two characters deal with water, and they know how to swim. Anyway, you want to go all the way down this hallway, and you're about to drown the drowning music playing iconically. But when you get up to the top here, you're going to find the air necklace. This is an upgrade that you can just get right away. This is not a mandatory upgrade, but it's a very nice one. It essentially allows Knuckles to breathe infinitely through the water. It's, it's nice. There is water bubbles you can collect in these underwater sections. I'm going to collect that because it makes the uh, his section at the end of the game very easy. So I recommend getting it for all those who might have struggled with that. And keep in mind, this area does have a launch pad, so you want to get it away of that. And that's a very important thing to collect in it. There's a couple of character upgrades that aren't required for the game. I will go over them near the end of, of this whole talk through. At the end of the hero story, I'll talk about the hero upgrades and where you can find them that aren't mandatory. However, you might need them for extra additional things. So yeah, I'll let you guys know when those are, when they are. Because you have to go backtrack some of the levels for some of them. Overall, Aquatic Mine is pretty basic. It's pretty small. It's mostly doing with the water's levels. <laughs> raising them and lowering them so make sure you click on which one and then you'll be able to find they're just a couple sections that you might have to lower and raise in order to get to because they are blocked off or than that it turns out the aquatic mines aren't too far away from san francisco because knuckles will appear from this little thing there little hole there knuckles. hey guys long time no see i must have got lost in the mines so Amy decides to pull Knuckles' head for some reason, and then Tails is like, I'm going to go after the president, because the president is in talks with Eggman, and that way we're going to find where Eggman is. And that brings us to a very unique level, Route 101. 
I tracked the signal from the Chaos Emeralds and located Eggman. What's Eggman doing in outer space? No worries. I gotta find the exact location of Eggman. Quick. No worries, Amy. Remember, I'm a whiz when it comes to mechanical things. I'll find the president. This mini game is basically taken from the kart racing mini game of in the game itself. Essentially, after doing this, you can unlock the kart racing ability, and you can race all the characters in their own little carts. But here, Tails is driving along on super fast down a really long highway in order to see where the president is. As you know, the president of the United States, or like I said, I, I assume it's the United States, and we're in San Francisco, and he looks American to me. But who the heck knows? Anyway, he's at the end of this, and we got to find him. So basically, how the car racing works, you got one button, it's the A button, your drive button. And if you collect enough rings or boosts from balloons, you can get a boost that makes it go faster. And you can turn quicker by letting go of the button and holding it again, and Tails goes into a slightly slower, but easier to turn mode. It's actually good, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's pretty fun. However, the A-Ricking this and the Rouge version of this level is really hard, because there are different styles. You can't, one of them's like, don't hand any cars, which is actually easier said than done. One of them's don't touch the walls, but you also, keep in mind, in order to get the air in, you gotta do these super fast. So trying not to touch the wall just a little bit while also going super fast took a while. But yeah, other than that, this level is pretty nice and fun. It's just that, those A-Ricks version of the mission, it, it just ruins the whole experience. After driving for a while, you'll find the president's limo. So the president decides to have a meeting with Eggman on his nice TV inside his limo. And Eggman says the most classic villain thing ever. I won't bore you with all the details since I know you are a very busy man. Mr. President, my demands are quite simple. Surrender to the Eggman Empire and make no attempts to resist. So Eggman says, Obey me or I'll kill the entire world. Because, you know, that's Eggman's whole... So Sonic hijacks the presidential limo, making himself a war criminal, but then again, he already is wanted worldwide. Not war criminal, but whatever, you know. He's going to be wanted by the FBI or GUN for a very long time after this. I don't care if he clears his name from Shadow. He broke into the limo. Anyway, he and Tails steal the data and figure out they're on Space Colony Arc. Sonic Team travels all the way to Eggman's Pyramid Base, which is where they can find a rocket in order to hitch to Space Colony Arc. Of course, Knuckles is interested because he saw that Batgirl go in there, and he presumes that she might, she might have some pieces of the Master Emerald, his luxurious emerald. So they're ready to go to storm into Eggman's secret pyramid. We rode in the president's limo, and guess what? We found where Eggman is hiding. Eggman and his buddies are in the space colony. Spark! Next step is to find Eggman's secret pyramid base. Somewhere in the desert. Got it. I'll go first and find the entrance. And that level is Hidden Base. Hidden base is a, a desert level, obviously, where we're trying to break into Eggman's base. Also, it looks like Gun is also here. This is the first level we actually get to see some badniks, because every robot we fought has been made by the government. So, yeah, that kind of is weird, you know. The whole game, we're fighting against Eggman, but most of the enemies are the government itself. Even in this level, we're right in Eggman's base, where his face is plastered all over this ancient pyramid. You gotta love Eggman. He finds ancient uh, artifacts, and he decides to put his face all over them. I mean, maybe he's trying to be secretive, but then again, he's probably not, because there's a bunch of flags here showcasing that, yes, I am here. The new enemy is a laser hawk. They shoot laser instead of bullets, so like the gun hunter versus the laser hunter, it's basically the same thing. Uh, yeah, they're not that interesting or worth noting, so let's go over to the actual two new badniks. Yes, badniks. One of the new badniks is just Kiki from Sonic Adventure. He's got a slate redesign, but he just works the same way as Kiki did in Sonic Adventure, which is basically the same thing as Coconuts from Sonic 2. So he's nothing too interesting here. The other one is an Orbanaut, which we've seen since Sonic 1, so nothing new here, but hey, there's it works the same as it did in Sonic Adventure, except this time you can shoot all the little spike balls, and they rarely appear in the game, but hey, it's, they're, they're, they're there! For this stage, you're mostly avoiding the bombless pets, which are just the uh, quicksand at the bottom here. Fall in there, tails will die. And there's actually a version of that in the so a Sonic level, but you can get out of them, but tails and Eggman, they cannot. So overall, you're just kind of exploring this base and you know, getting through all the uh, all the obstacles that Eggman might have put in his way to hide it from the military and Sonic and his friends. There is blocks and walls in the way that you got to blast in order to get through, kind of like a maze where you got to beat up Eggman's Sphinx face. And there are chambers where you got to pull yourself up, and then at the end you got to blow up the center in order to get to the top, and that's about it. 
nothing too difficult, nothing too hard. I did die at a stupid place while my score is so low, but other than that, this hidden base is not so much of a hidden base since we found the base. We managed to sneak into the pyramid and find Eggman's secret base. There's gotta be a way to get to outer space from here. We don't have much time, so let's go! The next level is Pyramid Cave, as Sonic says, let's get into it. This level is very unique from Sonic's perspective, as we got some corridors and a lot of loop hoops to run through and unique enemies to go through. So let's go through those enemies. One of the most unique enemies in the game is the E-1000, one of Eggman's mass-produced robots based off his E-Serie robot. And if you can tell, there's a reference to the Sonic Adventure character E-102 Gamma, but they're a lot weaker than Gamma is. Uh, so yeah, you want to kill all these you see, so you can free the little animal inside them, as Gamma would have wanted you to, because that would be really pissed off learning that Eggman made more of the, him. And that's all the enemies, except for the boos. Yeah, the boos from Knuckles' levels are making in the Sonic's levels, and they are annoying. Eventually they'll grab, they are way more annoying, because there's a lot more of them, and they grab Sonic in the most unopportune times. It makes it really difficult. Either way, this stage is really cool and really fun. It's kind of a spooky aesthetic, because we're in the dark inside this labyrinth. And no one else goes through the similar type of stage, so it's a very unique Sonic stage. The stage features hourglasses that you gotta hit in order for certain platforms or certain doors to open. And there are time. Sometimes the time is a lot tighter than you might think. So keep that in mind, and the time will be your guide. This stage also features a new upgrade, and that upgrade is one of my all-time favorites. The Bounce Bracelet. This allows Sonic to do a bouncing attack. Essentially, you hold down the action button, and Sonic will go straight down really fast, and he can get some good height out of this. This item doesn't seem like it's that, will be that good, but it's sort of like the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the Insta Shield for Sonic 3. It seems pretty incidental, but it's very useful. You can use it to get down rails easy, increase Sonic going down speed. It's like the stomp, but it gets you to extra additional height if you want it to. So it's incredibly useful. It's similar to the, uh, like an Insta Shield where it's like, it doesn't seem that useful, but it's very useful. And it's one of those abilities I wish that came back, but it only was, it only was in one game. And it sucks. I love it. Bring it back, Sega. At one point, you gotta go all the way over to another part of the level in order to get to this little thing you gotta carry. And this thing is a little switch and unlock a door. And it could be a little annoying. So you guys get rid of some enemies that the booze will just hold on to you for a while at being very annoying in order for you to get this little switch which you gotta carry and toss and then carry. It's a little slow, actually. It's not too long of a section, but... You kind of wish it wasn't really there, because Sonic holding stuff is just not that fun. Because I just want to put the thing in and go, but here the game's like, no. It's even harder on the hard vote mode of this game, where this, from this thing, you have to do it multiple times. Anyway, once you get to the top, you can get to the next. The next area is also Beginner's Trap. We're down a tube and a, in an hourglass, meaning the door at the end is going to close. And you have very little time, and you got these boo boo boos over there, always trying to grab you. So you got to make sure you do fast, but then you get tempted by these things to do extra points, but you shouldn't worry about that, because you gotta go fast, and then there's a ghost in the way, it's nerve-wracking, but if you know what you're doing, most of these are spin dash, and your spin dash has a lot of momentum, and it's really fun to use, and a nice little roll, and you, you should be able to do it in no time. And that's all the unique things about this level. Pyramid Cave's a fun stage, there's a bit of annoyance, but if you know how to play it, you can get through any area pretty quickly, and, and spectacularly. We can find it, right Knuckles? What? Why do I have to find a key? We're counting on you, buddy. The world's greatest treasure hunter. Anyway, the door is closed right in front of the gang, so Sonic's like, Knuckles, find keys, because you're the best treasure hunter, I guess. Knuckles is now the greatest treasure hunter in the world. Uh, I don't know where this really came from, because Knuckles, all he does is sit on his island all day and just sit with the Master Emerald. Does he look for treasure? I guess he does. We were able to locate Eggman's secret base deep inside the pyramid. Now we need to find the key to open the door to get to the other side. What? Why do I have to find that key? That's not my job, but I'll do it. I have to because it's for the Master Emerald. I'll show you the skills that make me the ultimate treasure hunter. The next level is Death Chamber, a Knuckles level where instead of finding Master Emerald shards, he's got to find Eggman keys. This level is sh shaped like a square, or tri actually triangle, I'm sorry, where there's three areas, you can travel through each one for different room narrow pathways. You also use the switches at Knuckles and Sonic's level in order to get past, but unfortunately there's some metal blocks in the way, but that's okay. Using the, your punches for these regular crates, you can find yourself the hammer gloves. These destroy the metal bo 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 boxes. Pretty much every character in the game has a version of this move, because there's all these metal boxes in the way that you gotta destroy using some ability. Of course, we haven't got to them yet, but Knuckles is the first character to get one. 
Oh yeah. So in the center here, we have all the different pathways you can take. And it's pretty simple actually. You can see on the map there where each one is. And I found one right before even finding it on the radar. This nice little key. This level only has one unique enemy, the Ningula, which is an enemy we've seen for a very long time in the Sonic franchise, but it's only in this version of the Knuckles level. There's also other unique enemies in this level. Why say unique level in enemies? There's other enemies we've seen before in this level. Those enemies being the Boo, Bombo, E1000, and that's about it. The best way to find parts here is we're le learning that these area is basically a triangle. And you just want to run through it as fast as you can, and eventually you'll find unique pieces of your map, of not the Master Emerald, of your keys. You'll be able to find it, and yeah, you find other goodies too. It's a little narrow, so what well, it, it looks a lot harder than it is. That's I think the thing is it can be a little daunting to some people, not knowing where to go. Basically, you just want to go one pathway, and eventually you'll go in a circle. Once you the landmarks are unique enough to re learn where you are at some point, and then you'll find where your piece are. Not your piece. You'll find where a key is. Though unfortunately for Knuckles, he gets scared. What the a ghost? That was a piece of cake. I found the key, and now it's time to explore Eggman's secret base. What was that? I got a bad feeling about this. It's creepy in here. But they're the spirits that guard the tombs? I don't think I can deal with this. Well, then how am I going to find the pieces of the emerald? Darn. I have no choice. So this is one of the strangest bosses in the game. King Bombo. Uh, ironically enough, at the same time, a Mario game would have a character called King Boo debut in the same exact year. I know, crazy, huh? King Bombo is a guy who is just super weird. He's got rainbow tongue. Essentially, you gotta hit the switch behind him, hold by regular Boo, in order for him to get scared. And he'll go into the ground where you gotta use your shovel claw to dig him out, and then you can give him a nice big punch. Ghosts don't like the light, and that's why you gotta keep in mind in this boss fight. However, this boss fight is long and kind of tricky, especially if you don't know what you're doing, and it's just uncanny as hell. This guy just sounds like a weird creep, too. So essentially the best way is to keep close, avoid his fireballs he throws at you, and eventually you'll do his attack where you can go to the back of him. Because sometimes you go to the back of him, especially later on in the fight, he'll just turn around right away. And that's when you can hit his boo, and he'll go into the wall. So yeah, eventually he'll swap places where he's going to be, and when the sunlight comes and add more moves. It gets a little tricky, but overall not too difficult if you know the pattern. The pattern isn't too difficult, it's just a little time consuming, especially since you can't hit him multiple times, you know, it looks like you can, he just outruns you after the first hit, which kind of sucks. <laughs> what a hat. After Knuckles almost got possessed by a ghost, they finally make it through the door only to find that Eggman's waiting on the other side. <laughs> This is the Egg Golem. This is similar to that Sonic 3 boss that, remember that weird guy? Yeah, you remember that guy. Uh, this guy essentially is not built by Eggman, by the way. It's just something he put a contraption on, some ancient deity, which is kind of interesting. After all, he did... This pyramid was not built by him. He just built his base inside the pyramid because, you know, Eggman's kind of a jack. Anyway, this boss isn't too hard. He'll try to punch at you multiple times, and then you guys go to this back where these little platforms will come out. You want to do some platforming here and get on the top. Use your uh, homing attack to hit the yellow little hieroglyphics and then the bomb on top. But sometimes you miss, but that's okay because Sonic can jump out of the quicksand unlike Eggman. Into this boss fight, even though I'm sucking at it right now, is actually pretty easy and it actually is pretty fun too. The, the guy has some new new moves too, where he'll do a headbutt attack and even swing his arms around. But Sonic has a pretty easy time to avoiding these attacks. And all you gotta do is get to the back side, and it's pretty basic from here on out. <laughs> Nice try, Rocky. 
It turns out that Eggman has a regular looking space shuttle going to the rock, the colony, and Sonic, and I guess the gang takes a ride, even though we only see Sonic go inside. But trust me, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy are also inside this rocket that's going into the space colony. Things are going smoothly. They're taking a flight right into space and right into the space colony. Only one problem is that it actually hits a meteor. What? The hatch doors don't are open. Don't sweat it, Knuckles. The only thing in the cargo bay are those what master emeralds. What do you mean don't sweat it? Right? Land the Knock shuttle and let me out. We're gonna crash this thing if you keep that up. Oh no! Don't touch that lever! So they almost died, but luckily they got out of that situation. You see, Knuckles got mad because his Master Emerald Shards flew out of the space. And the rest of them decided to go out to fight Eggman. Tails has a new plan. His plan is that he was able to concoct a Chaos Emerald out of studying the one he had. It has the same wavelengths and properties. And he's gonna, it's going to be used to go into the Eclipse Cannon, which is the cannon they used to blow up the moon. And it's going to basically hijack the whole system and blow it up. Also, this colony arc, or space colony arc, was not designed by Eggman, but rather G.U.N. under the influence of Gerald Robotnik as a study location, but it's been discontinued for 50 years. We'll learn more, way more about it in the next storyline. The plan is, we'll switch the Chaos Emeralds when the machine is stuck, right? Also, for like the fourth time in the game, Amy cries about being left behind. We managed to hotwire the space shuttle from Eggman's secret base, and finally arrived at the space colony, Art. It was our idea to destroy that weapon using the fake emerald I made. I wonder if Sonic understands the plan. It's up to me to find the power supply and fast. Our next stage is Eternal Engine, which is... I actually think it's the last tail stage, believe it or not. This stage can be a little annoying due to the fact that there are some air shafts that you can break through and they uh, come loose and you can get sucked into. If you don't know where, where they are, it can be quite a bit of a bothersome. Anyway, other than that, this stage isn't too much to walk, talk about. I'm about to say, about to say walk about, like an idiot. Our first new enemy is one of the most unique enemies. This is Artificial Chaos. Yeah, remember Chaos from Sonic Adventure? Well, it turns out that the professor was working on a way to make Chaos again. Uh, I'm going to get into this a little later, but I have a theory that connects to Chaos and even Shadow himself on some of the experiments going on based off some of the background information about the Space Colony arc. So these guys can be pretty annoying. They have outstretched arms and laser eyes. They're the, easily one of the most hardest enemies in Sonic game history. They have three different forms, defense mode and like floating mode. This is just the regular one. Their arm stretch attack is really fast and can be really hard to dodge unless you know the exact pattern to do, especially when they're right, two of them are right next to each other. These guys can be the biggest pain in the butt. The another enemy is a bomb wing, which is basically the, uh, the gum beetle wing as well as the bomb beetle. So combination of those two, there you go. We also got the gum beetle, which is like a beetle, but it has a gun attached to it. Lovely. As well as the Hornet 6. It's the Hornet, but, you know, 6 capsules instead of 3. Basically, there's a lot of bombs, explosions. You go into space at some points. There's a lot of pathways that you can explode and destroy. You gotta use your hover ability to get to certain areas. As well as other little things here and there to do. For example, here, uh-oh, we got those crates. We gotta destroy them. We gotta... Anyway, the upgrade is right here. The bazooka. This allows you to shoot through crates. Metal crates, that is. And that's... This stage has a lot of unique sections, like sections where tails falling for lasers and avoiding all the enemies while also trying to shoot them to get the combo up so you can get your A rank. Unless you don't care about the A rank, then you just fall flat on your face. And then at the final area, we gotta destroy a mech that Eggman's built, maybe a Gerald Robotnik built, who knows, where you gotta use all your range in order to shoot all the bullets as well as all the stuff that's coming at you in order to destroy it and get to the... This stage isn't bad, however... Yeah, there are some areas where it can be a little tricky, like this area here, we gotta watch out for these lasers and get the pattern wrong. But overall, it's not too bad, as long as you know the area. But if you're a first timer, this stage can mess with you quite a bit. Anyway, Sonic's made to the main controls, and he's ready to put the emerald in. Hey, Sonic! Now put that emerald... Tails! Tell Sonic to meet you back at the research facility! Sorry! Now. Amy is... I, I didn't get that, Tails! What happened to Amy? What happened to Amy? Unfortunately, we're interrupted by a meteor herd, the next knuckle stage, which doesn't have any intro in the fact that we see Sonic is in a discussion with Amy. This obviously tells you that knuckle stage was clearly meant to be its own story. That's why we get to, that's why most fans could tell that that was the original lineup. Not that it matters, because I like this version better than what we would have got, because we would have missed out playing as certain characters. 
like I said, this, I would like to see that original version with the level layout would look like. But yeah, this is the most, the most jarring Knuckles split is this part here, where we're just randomly during the middle of a cutscene, we're playing as Knuckles. I think they should have put that Sonic cutscene after this, to be honest, so it wasn't be, wouldn't be as jarring, at least in my opinion. Anyway, let's talk about Meteor Herd. The pieces of the Master Emerald I collected are now floating in space. We should have secured them better in the shuttle cargo bay. It's not an easy job protecting the Master Emerald, you know. I have to find them before we lose them again. The only new enemy here is Phoenix, which is just the Hornet 3, but slightly faster, so... Well, what was the point of making this Badnik? I don't understand it. Did I say Badnik? I meant gun bot. So in the Phoenix enemy, there's only two other enemies being Artificial Chaos and Laser Hawk. There's not a whole lot of enemies here, so overall you're not going to have too much problem. But you might have problems fighting the Emeralds, because this is the biggest, uh, I feel like the biggest Master Emerald lo Hunter location stage. Beginning, you guys, this giant base here where the, since they're so far apart, they could be there, you might think you're in range, but you may not be. So yeah, be careful with that. You also got a tower that can send you all the way to the top. There's a bunch of rockets, and there's a very vertical stage. There's a whole lot. You're right under the space colony on this little rock, basically. It's just a big old stage. Just keep in mind that what you want to do is around the area, make sure you glide around it far enough, because those area is a lot bigger than it looks. And make sure you can climb all the way to the top in order to find some Master Emerald but yeah, this stage is not hard and takes a lot of practice, and sometimes I can get them easily in this stage, but other times you can't, because like I said, the, the pieces are random, and there's a hundred different locations they can be in. So, yeah, keep that in mind, and just make sure you will get, v use the verticality of the stage to your advantage. There's plenty of rockets to choose, and you can dive back down pretty easily with your dive attack, so it shouldn't be too hard to find them if you know all the little tips and tricks. I can see why some people might get stuck on here, but I just don't have that problem. I like exploring the stages, and I guess some people might not like get into that, but I'm most people who like the treasure hunting stages, and even though this stage can be a bit of a hassle, you just, you just gotta keep exploring, and that's kind of fun. And you can always, like I said, reset this emeralds, or use the hints, or use guides. Keep in mind, the guides here suck. For some reason, they thought, well, we, the guides here give you bad hints, or wrong hints, or hints that make no sense, or are backwards. Why do they do that? I have no idea. This also applies for the Rouge stage, it's also the last stage. Anyway, let's find the last piece of the Master Emerald. After finding half of the pieces of the Master Emerald, I ran into that bad girl again. I bet she has the other half of the pieces. No time for small talk. I won't give it a chance. I've got to get those pieces back. Unfortunately for Knuckles, it turns out that Rouge was also looking for the pieces of the Master Emerald at this very same location. John no see, treasure hunter. Did you find my emerald? That's one, your emerald. Talking to you is a waste of time. Very well. If that's how you want to play, I will take it from you. Alright, here's our character fight between Rouge and Knuckles. Uh, the best way to do to beat her is using your dive attacks so she can counter your hits, because she has her own hits. Eventually, after a couple of hits, the uh, bottom part of this stage here will break apart and shoot you guys into the ceiling. Now, Rouge and we'll try to use her powers to attack you. Just make sure you're always moving. Make sure you're in the higher stage, she also can dive attack you. Just move around the stage, because it is a little harder to find them, and then use your dive attack, and this boss fight should be pretty easy. Make sure you're always in the, you're the higher part of it, and you should have no much, shouldn't have any trouble. There's plenty of rings here, but keep in mind, she can use her special attack ability, which looks like she's not going to do, and looks like she's going to go out pretty easily for me. Get ready! Brooklyn! I never lose! Get away from my emerald! So after they have their fight over the Master Emeralds, Rouge almost falls to her death. Stop fooling around and give me back my emerald! What are you babbling about? You call yourself a hunter attacking a lady? Shame on you! What kind of lady goes around stealing gems anyway? Rouge dies. Oh, actually, Knuckles decides to save her. Keep your hands to yourself. Don't touch me. Is that how you say thanks to someone who just saved your life? Saving my life. Don't think I owe you one. You just wanted to hold my hand, didn't you? That's why you saved me. Here's a This isn't a joke. I think you want that, girl. I was saving the Master Emerald. So Rouge decides to give Knuckles back the piece of his Master Emerald because they, she claims they stink. We should get going. 
And that's the end of the Knuckles campaign. Uh, no, if you're wondering, nothing happens between Knuckles and Rouge after this scene, even though it looks like they would have something going on. But who the hell knows? Sega doesn't like characters being in relationships, even though they're heavily hinting in this scene. Our plan was perfect. Until Eggman snatched Amy. Eggman said he'll trade his Amy for the Emerald. I have to think about that one. There's no time for jokes. Eggman's ready to fire that weapon again. Fails. Amy, hold on. I'm coming. The next level is Crazy Gadget. This is Crazy Gadget, one of the hardest levels in any Sonic game, basically. Uh, for Sonic, at least. If you want to play it all the time, it's not too hard. However, some of the gravity mechanics can be a little tricky-dicky. As we see, we can, trans we can transform the gravity in this level way before Mario Galaxy existed, and we have to fight a bunch of annoying enemies. Like this new enemy, the Shield Hunter. It's a hunter that has a shield in front of his face. And this guy's my least favorite enemy in the game because he just breaks up the pace of the entire game. It just sits, stands there, and then eventually it'll shoot at you. And once you once it tries to shoot at you, that's when you can hit it. You're over your time, you just wait slowly and impatiently. I'm Sonic. I want to blast for these robots, not wait for them to pull, pull up pull up their gun. Some of the other enemies include artificial chaos, the gun beetle, gun hunter, mono beetle, and a spark beetle. So quite a lot of enemies here. There's quite a lot of tricky dicky platforming, bottomless pits, or I guess goo, wherever that is. Like, what is that? Electrical field or something? But hey, there's bomb power ups. Oh, yeah, there's one item that you don't see a lot, but essentially, there's this little item box that has a bomb and it will destroy any enemy in the radius. Pretty cool. Eventually, at some point, you'll get to this room here, where you choose where gravity you want to go. Choose this right one here, all the way to the right, and you gotta go all the way down, and eventually, you'll find this grind rail that kind of defies the laws of gravity. And you grind down here. Be careful, because at the very end, you'll find a Chaos character who will try to hit you. Even though I know he's there, you still hit me. One of the most interesting things about this level is that there's hand grant rails that you can kind of hold onto and kind of grind on. It's pretty interesting, actually. Uh, you can't press any B button to do anything with them. And, yeah, be careful about falling. Each part of this level is broken up by sections where you break into this tube, and you go flying around in a kind of a Chemical Plant-esque tube scene. Anyway, you'll pull up some more gravity switches, and you need to go back a little bit, and you'll find the flame ring. This makes your somersault have a flame ability, which essentially all it does is make you able to destroy the steel box everywhere, so you can progress throughout this level. And you can find some rings that you can use a light speed dash, and this scene I always thought was really cool. I love that set piece so much. Also, this chaos guy that shoots out little babies is pretty basic to take out. So overall, this level can be a little annoying, but then at the very end, it completely changes everything. and puts everything... You'll find this area full of Tetris pieces where you gotta press a bunch of levers in order to get past. Now this scene is actually kind of annoying and takes a while. It looks neat, but holding down the switches just takes a lo way longer than it needs to be. But there's actually a nice little switch that I can help you with this. So instead of playing this level and trying not to fall off the edge because you're all disoriented, you can do this. Since the adventure games in the current shortcuts, you do a spin dash jump right here. You jump over here. You try not to... Uh, die by this artificial chaos, which is easier said than done, since, you know, he's shooting a lot of bullets there. Or you can just, just like, screw it and ignore it. And then you basically can press no. This will take you down, you go down this purple platform all the way at the bottom, and you're gonna need to use your bounce bracelet in order to hit this switch, which unlocks this rocket, and then you can do another precise spin jump, dash jump, and you can make it to the end. Doing that skip is so satisfying, I love doing it. You then get one of the best cutscenes in Sonic history. I'm not joking. I think pretty much every fan says this is probably the best cutscene in any Sonic game ever. Take care of business first, shall we, Sonic? Hand over to Chaos Emerald slowly, and then we'll talk about your girlfriend. That is, if you really care for her. Hand it over to Fake Emerald. I can kill two birds with one stone. Tails. 
Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic! It has the same wavelength and property, but is less powerful than the real one. The same wavelength and properties. Yes, I did just play that cutscene in pretty much its entirety. That, I mean, I have to showcase every scene. This cutscene is great. I love it. This is the most sinister Eggman's ever been. He's really putting a gun at people. He's like, fuck you, I know your plans beforehand, and I'm gonna finally kill that bastard Sonic the Hedgehog, which he thinks he does, and Sonic pretty much almost dies there. Uh, I quite like this, and this boss fight is probably one of the most tense because of that. Sonic was captured and put in that capsule. Eggman shot the capsule into space and exploded. No, it can't be true. Sonic can't be dead. Eggman, I won't let you get away with this. I promise Sonic I won't give up, and I won't. I'll make you pay for this. So the final fight between Eggman and Tails is, uh kind of not the most best boss fight. You gotta keep running around and try to get nice attacks on Eggman or vice versa when you're playing as Eggman. This boss fight is kind of annoying. Uh, Eggman shoots off a few lasers sometimes and the best, you gotta avoid it sometimes but the controls aren't that best and don't be scared that you might die. Uh, you wanna run around, basically shoot as much as possible and when you get the laser, make sure you run right out the way but that's the perfect time to attack it. Also just ignore that random middle thing in the area because it doesn't really seem to do much. Just try not to shoot it and get in the radius of it. And once you do a bunch of ring around the rosies, you'll be able to finally defeat Eggman. Oh, I can't lose to Tails. I did it! So it turns out that Sonic didn't die, since he, despite never doing it before, was able to do Chaos Control. Some people are like, how could he do this? Well, keep in mind, Sonic's used the Chaos Control multiple times beforehand, so even though he's never done the move before, he probably could be was able, could be able to do it, since after all, it has the same wavelength and properties. It's a very rare occurrence for it to happen, but you know, Sonic has a lot of willpower, so of course, if anyone's going to make it happen, he was. This is our last chance. Four cannon fires. I'll slam dunk it in there. Our final stage is Final Rush. Hurry and find the point of the cannon. Anyway, now Sonic's in the middle of a space and he's got to make his way for a long journey to get to the cannon's core. And this stage is actually might be one of my favorite stages in the game. Uh, this game stage takes entire advantage of the, all the movements mechanics you learn as Sonic. You can do a lot of shortcuts, you can do a lot of skips, there's a lot of bombless pits. The scope is amazing in this stage, the music's amazing. It's hard, but it's fair hard. There's not too many enemies here, it's just a lot of platforming challenges using the momentum and physics you learn throughout the game. There's a whole lot of unique shortcuts you can take and other elements like that. The grinding is mandatory to learn and it's all over bombless pits, so you can make sure you know how to grind at this point. I prefer the grinding in this game compared to later games where it's just kind of like you stay, it's kind of like on a rails where you don't really have to do much and then skip to another rail. Here in this game, it's to use more momentum, which is what I like about Sonic. Uh, people's classic fans always talk about momentum, but the adventure games have momentum too, and they're quite fun. That's why I don't understand why some people don't like the adventure games. I know it's not, I think it's a more of a loud majority, minority of people rather than a big majority, because uh, Sonic Adventure 3 is one of the most wanted games, and that can't be because these games are bad, because these games are good. Uh, that's just my opinion, after all. I'm biased. This is my favorite game of all time. I took a chance using Chaos Control and managed to escape from Advanced Track. There's actually quite a few amount of unique enemies, but you don't see a whole lot of them here. You got a lot of unique grinding platforms, allows trying to spin, you gotta use your uh, homing attack into these rails in order for it to go up, which is pretty unique. Like I said, I like the platforming a lot here. It feels like if you know the gameplay at this point, it just feels very rewarding and satisfying. I don't know, I really like this level. I don't... I know it can be challenging to newcomers, but this game is like kind of like Sonic Adventure if it was a harder game, essentially. So I can understand some people liking Adventure 1 over Adventure 2, but I kind of like that challenge Adventure 2 has. 
And if you're someone like me who's played this game multiple times, it's not too much of a challenge at all, really. It is a little challenging, but it's not too hard. It's one of those things that the game wants you to learn the controls and master them in order to complete it. And there's something bad wrong with that. If you play this game multiple times, you're like, oh, you learn, okay, that physics, the physics are like this. It's not the most uh, straightforward game out there, I know. It, because they had to switch between different play styles that are a little different, and that could be a little jarring to some people, and I get that. But I don't have a problem with that. I like all the play styles. Sonic may be the best, but I like the treasure hunting stages. I like the mech stages. They add a unique variety to the game, and each of them are well-designed, and the momentum and physics of the, each of the characters work incredibly well. I just like the game. Oh yeah, I should talk about the, the unique enemies. Uh, there's the Hornet 6, Hornet 9, which... I guess is in here. It says normal mode in the wiki, but I don't know what normal mode means. Some of the some of these things need to be edited. Uh, Hornet Nine just a Hornet with nine enemies parts, I guess. Artificial chaos and yeah, that's about it. Eventually, you'll make it to some compactor area where a bunch of weird metal scraps are coming at you. But just hold down, hold the forward or down wherever direction, and you'll make it to the end. Just before making to the Eclipse Cannon, Sonic runs into Shadow as they have a heart-to-heart -heart banter, realizing that each and other are equal rivals rather than just being a faker, if you will, having mutual respect. But at the end of the day, they know they have to fight each other. You never cease to surprise me, Blue Hedgehog. I thought that capsule you were in exploded in space. You know, space. what can I say? I die hard. You actually saved me, you know. It was a chaos symbol, wasn't it? But there's no way you could have activated the Chaos Control using an emerald that's fake. So, there's more to you than just looking like you. What are you, anyway? See, what you get? Just a guy that loves adventure. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog! I see. But you know, I can't let you live. Your adventure days are coming to an end. Shadow is our final battle of the hero story, and it is can be a little more tricky than said than done. I know I say that a lot, said than done, tricky, you know, that's what happens when you're bad at communication. Either way, Shadow here, he can be a little difficult to take out. First, you go behind him, and you spin dash into him, but then after a while, he'll get a little pervy to you, and you gotta find a way to hit him. Essentially, at some point, after I think two or three hits, Shadow will, will jump at you so you won't be able to spin dash back into him, unless... He does a certain move. In order for him to do that move, you gotta be behind him. But keep in mind, the platform behind you is also falling down. So it can cause a, a bit of a trickiness. However, the only thing that makes this level not boss file that t too bad is that there's a bunch of rings. Now, you can only really attack him when he's in that mode. And you have to be, you have to time it just right. And it's kind of hard to line up sometimes. You can use the rings if the rings are in the right spot and use the light speed dash on into him. But that's easier said than done. But yeah, this boss fight takes a little patience. However, you can grind some uh, rings if you want. Just watch out for his, his little time, his speech, and then you'll be able to take him out. I am the ultimate life. Game over, Shadow. Sonic, I did it. Awesome job, Tails! Sonic! Look outside! And that was the hero's story. It doesn't really make much sense to uh, contemplate it, since I feel like both, most stories are very well connected rather than being individually characteristic. But yeah, the hero's story is great, so let's move on to the dark story, because why not? So Sonic is able to destroy the Space Colony arc with, well, kind of, explodes it a little bit. Uh, it doesn't really die, because in the next next tutorial on mode, we reveal that it didn't really do much. But hey, Sonic did it. Sonic's alive, Tails and Amy are super happy, and Sonic does a nice little pose. We'll just ignore the fact that Eggman grabbed a Chaos Thermal just there. Our first level is Iron Gate. Eggman steals the research from a military base located on an island to the south. The military's top secret weapon, Shadow, sealed in the space colony park. The Seven Chaos Emerald. 
when all of the keys have been collected, World Conquest will be at hand. Sonic Adventure 2, The Dark Side Store, Long Live the Eggman Empire. You see, the gun is shutting down his base as an intruder is coming, the intruder being the big old egghead himself. It's not real. <laughs> Eggman's breaking in to discover a secret project that his grandfather, known as Jeld Robotnik, was working on 50 years ago that the military decided to shut down. Thinking it's a secret weapon he used to take over the world. Dr. Eggman, the greatest scientific genius of the world. By accident, I found my grandfather's diary. It is one of the mysterious, powerful secret weapon he was working on called Project Shadow. The diary looked like it was sealed inside the military research facility when it was shut down over 50 years ago. What a waste of good research. The legacy of the greatest scientific mind in the history of the world. But as for Gerald, that's my brand. I might as well get some use out of it. In this stage, you're breaking in and basically blowing up everything in your path. It's a pretty basic and easy stage, after all this was supposed to be the first mech stage in the entire game, so it makes sense why it's so easy. Essentially you got a lot of targets to hit, a lot of secret pathways to go through, and doors to break through. In the doors region always have these four little red squares on each side of them. Uh, this is very similar to Tails' first stage, except kind of in reverse, instead of going up an elevator, you're going down. Now usually I'd skip this elevator part, but since I don't have that upgrade, I can't do it. You see Eggman also has a booster that makes him fly, but he can't fly right now. Oddly enough, there's not really much to say about these mech stages, which is why they're the shortest part of the review. Even though they don't go, they go on for a little bit. They're pretty straightforward. Not much going on in the ways of gameplay. At the end, they will lock in all the doors in you, and all you gotta do is use this little elevator and shoot the gun in order to shoot through gun. If that makes any sense, it's a missile more like thin rather than a gun. Now you know why I am the best. So Eggman finally makes it to the containment which had held Project Shadow. Enter user data. Enter password. Password is Maria. Maria. Now all I have to do is to place the Chaos Emerald into this console. Inside this test tube, we are introduced to a brand new Shadow the Hedgehog, who ever confuses for Sonic, despite the fact they don't really look that much alike. Are you trying to spoil my plans again? Wait, you're not Sonic. This is impossible. My name is Shadow. Since you were so kind to release me, my master, I will grant you one wish. I'm not sure what Shadow is talking about a wish for some reason, but hey, maybe he thinks that his robot Eggman here looks like his old creator because, you know, they're related. But then... How did Joe Robotnik create somebody that looks similar to Sonic in his organic material? Well, I guess we'll get into that later. In order to show Eggman how strong Shadow is, he decides to beat up the nearest gun guy. I'm Shadow the Hedgehog, the one and only ultimate life form, awakened from a deep sleep that lasted over 50 years. Dr. Eggman, the grandson of my creator, Professor Gerald, has freed the Doctor Awakened me. And for that, I have granted him a wish. First, let me show you the true power I possess. In 10 seconds, I was able to destroy the military hardware. For some reason, that dialogue got cut off, but here it is. B3X Hot Shot, who is just Bigfoot. A lot of this stuff has been copied over from the hero story, but slightly tweaked. Shadow basically controls exactly the same as Sonic. In fact, all the characters do, other than the fact that some have more upgrades than others. Uh, she, yeah, Shadow's basically the same, except he got killed by the, uh, hot shot, so I guess he's... Anyway, if you didn't fail to pick up rings or dodge the attacks, you'll be able to defeat hot shot pretty easily. I'm too strong! <laughs> Pathetic humans. Destroying that dark robot was spectacular! So Shadow's like, get cast thermals and I'll grant you a wish, old fat man. And meet me in this thing called Space Colony Arc, and I'll show you some magic. Meanwhile, we get the same exact cutscene we see in the hero story where Rouge and Knuckles have their fight and Eggman takes the Master Emerald. The only difference here is that Rouge's theme plays rather than Knuckles' theme. My name is Rouge the Bat, better known as the Treasure Hunter Rouge. I just love jewels and cannot seem to get enough of them. I found this very valuable Master Emerald, but this annoying Eggman has been following me. He's so persistent. 
This strange old man with a weird looking mustache tried snatching it from me. But before that happened, it was shattered into pieces. Oh, look what you've done! Now I have to find and collect all of the pieces! Anyway, Rouge's first stage is Dry Lagoon. Dry Lagoon is kind of like an alternate version of Wild Canyon, except it's not really dry. In fact, there's quite a lot of water, so they kind of lied about that. First thing you want to do in this stage, by the way, is see these gun hunters here? You want to destroy them so this turtle can go freely to its spots, because you're going to need to use that turtle later on. Dry Lagoon has an upper section and a lower section, so it's kind of similar to the Wild Canyon, but not really. Essentially, in order to transition to different areas, you gotta save that turtle. In order to do that, you gotta go down the turtle by pressing the action button. And there's an area that's similar to the one in Wild Canyon. There's water where sometimes there's like an emerald piece there, but usually not. Anyway, there's small little sections on the left and right side, and usually you'll be able to find a piece of the emerald there. Of course, Rouge thinks she deserves to get the Master Emerald Shards because she found it, even though she probably found it on Master in the Angel Island. And she's not the most observant bat in the world, apparently, because she thinks that Knuckles does not deserve to have the emerald because she took it, or something like that. Yeah, Bruce is a really interesting character, to say the least. Anyway, this stage is actually pretty basic, and she'll be able to find all the pieces of the Master Emerald pretty easily. How is that? Perfect? Like me? I will use Shadow from the military research facility. But now, Shadow told me to bring the Chaos Emerald and join him at the space colony. Ark, there must be something going on. I should go back to the base and check it out. Next stage is Sand Ocean. Try to find your hidden base in the dark. And Eggman claims that those idiots will never find my hidden base inside the pyramid, despite the fact that all of Gun is still there. I mean, all the robots and stuff are, are right in this area. In fact, their flags are right there, so I don't know what Eggman's talking about. They won't find it inside the pyramid. Where else would they look? Eggman, he isn't the sharpest tool in the shed. This stage is actually pretty fine, other than the fact that when you start out, you do not have your booster, and keep in mind, the glide is very useful ability to have in this stage. It's kind of slow and monotonous about it. So with it, it's fun, but without it, it sucks. Actually. It, this is weird. It's like a it transitions from like a 6 to like a 9, depending on what upgrade you have, which is the only time this actually happens in the game. But because you don't have the glide, you have to do a lot of slow platforming. Sure, you can do some skips, but Eggman's Walker isn't the best jumper in the world, so yeah, these are not something you can do without waiting. Waiting on the world to change. So there's not much to say about this level. It's in the dark. It's kind of a dark version of Tails level, except, uh, I guess, less block put destroying and more like pillars destroying like so this level isn't bad it's just without the glider it makes this more of a pain to play because the platforming isn't the best without the glider these like mechs are designed for the glider and when gamma you get the glider pretty early you don't even need it that much but here these mechs you just look like they're designed to have it but for some reason they decide to wait way later in eggman's gameplay in order to get the actual boost which tails gets in the beginning of the second level i do not understand why they did Anyway, Eggman's like, I'm going to use my computer to see if I can find some that he has some roles and do some research about Space Colony Arc and all this other stuff. Though he gets a news broadcast before he even does this, so he watches the news. While watching the news, Eggman decides it's a good idea to scratch his ass. He learned that someone's broken in and stolen a Chaos Emerald. Of course, they think it's Sonic, but of course Eggman knows it's actually Shadow. According to eyewitnesses at the scene, the suspect was identified as the world-renowned hero, Sonic the Hedgehog. More details. The work of Shadow. We then cut to Shadow saying, these guys are pathetic, who then flashbacks to a scene that traumatized him. You see, he used to be on the Ark, in fact he was created there, during the 50 years ago, Gun took over and shot his friend Maria, who has to be the great daughter or granddaughter of Gerald Robotnik, meaning that she's Egg Eggman's cousin. Of course, he was sad that she died here, and he misrepresents reads her promise. Shadow, I beg of you, please Maria. do it for me, for all the people on that planet. So now we know why Shadow is so angsty. You see, he thinks that humanity killed his friend, and now he's going to take revenge out on all of humanity because of this. I took the Chaos Emerald from the National Reserve Bank, and now the military and police are chasing me. I don't care if they know who I am because they'll never catch me. 
It's just a waste of time. There's no time for games. I have to get out of here. Fast. Shadow's stage, Radical Highway, which is actually his first stage, is a pretty iconic stage. In fact, they brought it back in Sonic Generations 3DS, even though Sonic never plays this level. Though he maybe originally was going to play it. And Radical Highway is similar to the Tails level as well as City Escape, except we're at night in the Golden Gate um, that's whatever you call Shadow, whatever he's doing. Yeah, Shadow, if you can tell, doesn't run normally. He uses his air shoes to kind of glide across the ground. So people theorize maybe he's not as fast as Sonic, despite him usually keeping up with Sonic. However, it's kind of debate over how fast certain characters even are in the Sonic series, because when playing the game, some characters actually move faster. In fact, in this game, you can play as Eggman, and Eggman technically moves faster than Sonic, which is kind of insane. But who really knows? I mean, Radical Highway is pretty great. In fact, if you got rings, it's pretty amazing. There's a bunch of springs everywhere bouncing you all around. There's bad robots from Gun trying to attack you at every corner. You got a whole lot of stuff going on here. It's a level that a lot of fans have replayed, especially if you're a Dark Side Story fan, because this is the first, well, speed stage that, that exists since the rest of the stages we've been playing as Eggman and one time as Rouge. And there's a lot of cool stuff. You like this giant uh, set, set piece in between the Golden Gate Bridge, which if you miss, somehow like I did, you'll go to this bomb section. However, there's a top section, which has unique pathways, which are pretty fun to go through. I love when the games have alternate pathways, and this game has plenty. Another thing I love is this random ramp in the middle of this one passageway. It is fun to go over. I'm not sure why they put, decided to put a ramp there, but hey, I'm not going to judge, because it's... And we'll make it to the end of the level by going through a corkscrew and going into the end. But watch out, there's an enemy there, but luckily I know it's going to be there, so I spin dash. You then get the same cutscene of Sonic and Shadow meeting for the first time, pretty much, with some Sonic parts cut out of it, so it feels a little janky. It doesn't really matter we've seen this cutscene before. So While there isn't too much shared cutscenes, they aren't as unique as Sonic Adventures 1, where they have different perspectives and different dialogue. Here, they're basically the same, except for certain character themes we'll be playing in the background. So Shadow, Sonic's theme will be playing, and Shadow's theme will be playing, and stuff like that. It's nothing too big. So it makes it so there's not much to say about these cutscenes when re I was able to put a transmitter on that old man's machine when he first appeared. I can't tell you why. Just yet. Then I tracked and followed him to this pyramid. But couldn't get in because the door was sealed. Hmm. Maybe I need to find a key or something to get in. Anyway, the next stage is Egg Quarters. So Rouge is on a secret mission with somebody that we don't know. Yeah, she tells us she won't tell us, so we don't really know. So not only is she looking after gems, she's also looking after Eggman for some reason. She's going to break into his pyramid base by finding the keys. So yeah, Egg Quarters is basically the same as the pyramid level with Knuckles, except it's more. The reason because of this is this one little annoying guy that appears all over the place. This is an egg beetle, which is not enemy you can defeat. It's kind of a thing that's searching for egg for any intruders, and when it sees you with its annoying flashing green lights, it will just shoot a bunch of th beams at you. And fortunately, this thing's all over the place, and it distracts you from trying to find the keys, and it's, it sucks. I don't like this gameplay element. Other than that, this stage is very similar to Knuckles' version. It's actually a smaller area, I believe, and there's like not much st strut stratosphere. I don't know. I can't speak. There's an upgrade in this level that is not kind of out of the way, but you're going to require to need it because, you know, there's going to be a digging area, and that's basically what you're going to need to get in order to dig for certain elements. This upgrade can be found in this mill room by using this rocket to launch into it. And for all those crates in here, you'll find these new upgrade known as the Pick Nails. The Pick Nails allow Rouge to basically do the same thing Knuckles does, which is dig and stuff, because as we all know, bats know how to climb. Not climb, but they know how to dig. Not really, they don't know how to climb. Like I said, this stage isn't really hard. It's actually pretty much ba pretty basic, much like the Ed Knuckles version. Like I said, even less so. The only dead problem is you got to either decide if you're going to get let yourself get hit by the, the annoying egg beetle or you're just going to uh, try to run or hide. Either way, you Rouge does some spying on Eggman, and we're not really revealed what she's up to, but she knows where he's going, and she's going to follow after him. I went to the space colony park, as Shadow told me to do. Eggman's next stage is Lost Colony. Lost Colony is kind of an annoying stage because for some reason it's in the dark. Adventure 2 Battle fixes an element of this being how dark it is by actually giving Eggman a little bit of a light there, which adds a little bit to the stage. It makes it more playable, but the regular Adventure 2 version is kind of annoying. So that's just like Tails version, except not as hard, but at the same time kind of just annoying. 
I'm not a big fan of dark elements in games. Like, I'd rather just be able to see anything. I know Adventure 1 had a similar area, but it was a small area and it wasn't too difficult. Here, it's kind of like, okay, I'm just going to go slow and see if I can aim at stuff. Even if you know the pattern, is still kind of not a fun idea for a level. That's all I can really say about it. It's not hard, it's not really fun, and also, this is the level, half, mid, midway through, you can finally get the boot, the jet boosters, you know, the item that allows you to glide, one of the most useful items that the, uh, these type of characters have. I have no idea why it took them so long to give it to the, this character, but whatever, they decide to get In the square room, you'll find these boxes, you jump up on them, trying to get hit by any uh, enemies in the way. I haven't mentioned any enemies in Dark Side Story, since there's no unique enemies I haven't mentioned before. So there you go, and Eggman gets the jet engine, his version of Tails Booster, which allows him to finally glide. There isn't much left to say about this stage, it's kind of forgettable, so let's go on to the next. Shadow's waiting for Eggman, because Shadow knows how to get to the Space Colony Arc. Maybe his time chaos control is really powerful, so he can use it to travel through space, I guess. I don't know, that's my excuse. Uh, I wish there was more cutscenes in the Dark Story, as you see there's kind of lacking some that can fill in some gaps, because they travel from point A to point B really fast, faster than Team Sonic does, but whatever. Anyway, Shadow explains that this is the Eclipse Cannon that can just annihilate a whole planet with the power of the Seven Chaos Emeralds. ...named the Eclipse Cannon, destroying an entire planet. Was this my grandfather's legacy? To reactivate the machine, we need the seven Chaos Emeralds. Once you have that, then you have the ultimate power of destruction to use as you please. And then, the world could be yours. <laughs> Sounds good. During their conversation about royal domination, a sly bat comes in and interrupts them. But she's like, hey, I actually want to join you because I can help you out because I'm a good treasure hunter after all. I did steal a Master Emerald from Angel Island without anyone but Knuckles noticing. And Eggman decides to accept the deal because Shadow's like, yeah, I don't think she's hot. Because if you remember, by Guptail, according to him, Rouge is also one of Shadow's lovers, even though they're not actually in a relationship. So they have a plan on Prison Island because there's Chaos Emeralds here because Rouge knows this because she works for the government. Well, oh, I, mean, I wasn't supposed to say that, but yeah, she she works for GUN, believe it or not, and that's how she knows. So, Eggman is going to destroy the island because, why not? <laughs> There's no reason for him to really destroy the island other than he gets racist tracks, but he's already been here before, so he doesn't really need to do that, does he? We have 30 minutes to pull this mission off, and we only get one try, so don't fail me. The Batgirl Rouge joined our forces and we came back to Prison Island. We came here to look at the Chaos Emerald. Stored somewhere in the military research facility. I will go first to distract the troops. <laughs> then we will carry out our plan. Stage 7 is Weapons Bed, and Eggman's going out to distract the troops so that Shadow can plant a bomb and Rouge can steal some emeralds. This stage is noteworthy because you have so many deactivated GUN hunters here that you can just have a giant combos. It's actually quite fun to do. It's fun in the sun, if, you do say, if I do say so myself. This is a pretty well-designed mech level, because it's open, there's a lot of obstacles to shoot, it's not narrow, you, you can see stuff, and we have the glide ability, so everything's hung. We even get a new upgrades, since there's steel crates here, we gotta get our own version of a way to, to destroy it, which is Eggman's large cannon, which looks like a AK-47 upside down. And this large cannon will be able to destroy these metal crates, so Eggman can travel through and complete the rest and that's all there is to say about this level. It's pretty basic and pretty fun. As I said before, I have no idea why, but I just have very little to say about these actual mech stages, which is strange. It's not like this is a very this is a unique Eggman level. In fact, the only other character that runs through a similar area is Sonic, and Sonic, of course, doesn't play the same as a mech. So you think I had more to say, but really I don't. He's on a, uh, a gun base, and he destroys lots of robots. And that, Despite Eggman trying to distract the soldiers, he's with all three of them. I guess they decide to come with him. Then Shadow gets harassed by Amy, believe it or not, who thinks that Shadow is Sonic, despite the fact they look nothing alike. Oh, Sonic! I thought I'd never see you again! I'm so glad you made it! Oh, you're not Sonic! Who are you? Don't you're Eggman! Ah! So Eggman's like, go out and do your things, I'm gonna kill this little pink hedgehog here. Unfortunately for Eggman, Tails is going to stop him, as we already know that's going to happen since we played the Sonic storyline. When we 
breach the military research facility to dent the Chaos Emerald, someone was there to stop us. Shadow, just go. I'll take care of him. You will be my boy. We have a boss fight against Tails, and I would say, oh, look how unique it is, but it's exactly the same as Eggman the boss fight, other than the fact that we're playing as Eggman now. So if you played before, you should have no time trouble beating a Tails here. Better luck next time, Fox Boy. I got inside the military research facility, just as the doctor planned it. I need to find the three remaining Chaos Emeralds. And that is when people complain. Five minutes is too hard. Well, security hall is not a very long stage. In fact, it's a very unique stage. We're trying to find three cast emeralds, which is pretty crazy. You know, usually you find a little piece of the master emerald. Here we're finding three whole cast emeralds in quick succession, since you know they're securing them here on this island. Rouge knows this because she secretly works for Gun, but nobody knows that. Not even you know that. And that's why she's so confident. Now, people don't like the five-minute time limit, but since I pretty much never go over five-minute time limit, it doesn't matter that much to me. But I remember as a kid, I struggled on this stage quite a bit because of the time limit. Uh, this is probably one of the worst stages to put a time limit because, you know, treasure hunting stages are not the easiest for people to get to start off with, especially if you don't know the layout. But if you do, it's not too bad. I don't mind it personally, but I can see why some people might have some gripes with it. Anyway... So all these are hidden behind in cages too. In order to undo these cages, you gotta go higher up in the level in order to, to get. There should be a little grappling line you can take, and up in this upper level, you can also find some cast emeralds yourself, which actually I did when I was looking trying to get through one. But you can see it right there. There are three switches on this upper level. There are those if you couldn't tell if you've seen them before in the game, and they unlock the little uh, cages in the bottom area, the vaults, if you will, each for different levels. So make sure you get them. Uh, I forget which ones do which, but you can just unlock all of them if you will. Of course, it's important since one of the emeralds is locked inside one of the case, the vaults. I, I don't think it's a guarantee that one of them might be locked in there, but keep in mind they might be, so you got to make sure you go to that upper level to find But Rouge, unfortunately, gets trapped by another gun guy, even though she works for gun. They're still going to attack her. This is R1A Flying Dog. It's very similar to Bigfoot and Hot Shot, except it's always flying. So yeah, it's the same boss fight as here, except now you gotta either climb on the walls or jump on the bricks and glide into it. What did I say bricks? I meant to say, meant to say boxes. Oh, that's what happens when you record a video for hours at a time. Come on, your setback. Just how could I have let this happen to me? After collecting the three chaos emeralds, something caught my eye. All of a sudden, the security alarm went off, and I was trapped inside the safe. From out of nowhere comes this strong-looking fighter. There's not much time left before the bomb that shadows that goes off. This is just not my day. First, I've got to take care of business. I think this boss fight is more annoying than the other ones. Well, it's not hard. It is a decent challenge, but it's not as easy as a Shadow or Sonic version of this boss fight. So sometimes it feels like you're right there, but you don't hit him. But hey, be patient, and eventually you'll defeat this guy who thinks that he is a hot shot, but he's not. He's a flying dog. <laughs> Not bad, huh? I'm pretty strong, alright. So Rouge is stuck inside the vault. I guess it's shut behind her. And Shadow's like, eh, I don't really care. Though strangely, he starts to have flashbacks of Maria and decides to actually save her. You know, he doesn't want to. Looks like Batgirl has failed her end of the deal. I really could care less about her. It's the Chaos Emeralds I have to save. I have to hurry because there's not much time left before the bomb goes off. The next stage is White Jungle, despite it not being white. I guess there's fog, maybe that's why it's white. Uh, it was changed to rain in the Adventure 2 Battle version, in case you're wondering. A White Jungle is very similar to Green Forest, which is the Sonic stage of the same type. Uh, there's a couple of slightly differences between Shadow and Sonic's version. So, yeah, Shadow's version has some nice little grappling hook things that swing them up. Or unlike Sonic's version, which doesn't have these. Whippy! Shadow's version of the stage is kind of, I guess, would we'll describe it as a harder version, but not really. There's different elements going on in it. It feels similar, but has unique, like, little obstacles and such that make it, you know, quite a unique. At one point, you'll come here and find these two badniks, 
and a trailer rings. Of course, Shadow doesn't have his light speed dash, so we gotta get it for him. You unhook this box here, and you go down this hole, and this is where you'll find the light speed dash, or air shoes for Shadow. It makes his shoes really puffy in the back. And now he can tra travel along a trailer rings as long as he doesn't bonk his head on the railing. And once he uh, travels along a bunch of zip lines here, whatever you call these, he'll make it to the end of his stage. When Shadow lands, he finds the Blue Hedgehog, again, of all places, and they have the same cutscene that we've seen already. Slightly different camera angles this time, though. That other hedgehog appeared while I was on my way to rescue Rouge. He's starting to irritate me. It's time to show my true power. You can kind of tell at this point that Dark Story has a lot of repeat elements from Hero Story. Uh, because Shadow and Rouge were not originally meant to be playable, they actually added a lot, and it feels a little bit rushed, which is a problem. Sonic Rush, you will. Also, yeah, this boss fight's the same as Sonic, and it's it's very. Oh, that hurt. No time to hang out with the likes of you. So Shadow leaves Sonic to blow up on the island, as he's worried about the Chaos Emeralds, as he claims, as Rouge is about to die, but using his Chaos Control powers, he's able to save both their lives. Chaos Control. We see that the island is once again blown up, but that's okay. Because now they have enough Chaos Emeralds to test out the Eclipse Cannon. Think it's like on Earth? The professor said his life's work was dedicated to all of those who live down there. He once told that the reason for his existence was making people happy through the power of science. Shadow! Maria, I just don't know anything anymore. I often wonder why I was created, what my purpose is for being here. Maybe if I go down there, I... I will find the answers. Maybe. Maria. Why so melancholy? In between this, Shadow actually has another flashback when he's back on the ark. That was so unexpected. So unlike you, Shadow, to come and rescue me. But your ability to use the Chaos Control certainly comes in handy. Hmm. You know, I didn't come to save you. I came back for the Chaos Emeralds. Yeah, yeah, but then again, that's <clears throat> not... So after that, Eggman once again makes an announcement, and he blows up the moon. An ugly girl with blonde pigtails is also still scared of it, Robotnik, as he calls himself. We do have a different reaction. It turns out that Eggman is not too happy, as he wanted to blow up the entire moon, even though it would mess up all the tides. But yeah, that's what they are. They're trying to find the rest of the Chaos Emeralds. Well, the one last. It turns out that one person has it. I found this! Why didn't you show me this before? This station square saved from a life-threatening missile attack. The city has awarded its main prize to the boy who saved station square. Miles Tails per hour was given the Chaos Emeralds. How did they hold the ceremony at City Hall after the events of Station Square being attacked? And he can't get it before Perfect Chaos because how else would he get the Chaos Emerald now? Because the they only know, you know it doesn't make any sense. Who cares? So it turns out that after all this, everyone's gone. Rouge has been looking into Project Shadow with G U N, and the reason why she's doing this is because she wants jewels, of course. We announced our plans for world domination. Using the power of the Chaos Emeralds, we stole from the military research facility. Charging the Eclipse Cannon is taking too long, so we've got to get the last Chaos Emeralds and fast. What is that box for? So the next level is R Route 280, I believe, which is Rouge's version of the Tails level. It's pretty much the same, same controls and everything, so not much to say here, she's just looking for Tails. And eventually she does find him. Isn't that amazing? I received a message from Rouge to follow that plane. The pilot is in possession of the last Chaos Emerald. There are so many creepy looking mountains ahead of me. Never mind that. I won't let the plane get away. The next stage is Sky Rail, a unique shadow level that's super fun. That also is close to Pumpkin Hill, which is why there's so many creepy pumpkin heads that apparently shadow is scared. Skyrail features quite a lot of rails, which, hence the name, Skyrail. But hey, it's pretty cool. We got this weird mechanic of these springs, you gotta use your homing attack multiple times in order for you to bounce all the way to the top. 
Uh, sometimes it can be a little annoying, especially when they saw the bad. No, what I keep. I think it's bad nicks, but they're actually gun robots. Gun robots get in the way. I have a habit of seeing bad nicks. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This level is actually pretty short, but it's very fun. This level really wants you to test your rail knowledge. As there's so many rails, including well, it's called Sky Rails. Of course, it'd be rails. Also, keep notice that Shadow shoes are designed to go on the rails themselves. Uh, later on, Snack will do a lot of rail stuff, but his shoes aren't designed for it, so he's using his flats of his shoes to grind on rails, despite the fact there's like no gap for them. But whatever, it doesn't really matter. Sonic does what Sonic can do. Almost under two minutes, this level is pretty much almost over. With one last section and one more rail section to go, you pretty much can beat this level pretty easily. There's also these two enemies I didn't mention before. They're rhino bots that you can't really defeat unless you do a roll into them. They suck, so that's why I didn't mention them before. And plus, I don't ever really see them in levels. And here we go, on to the next stage. This level is also kind of pointless, it's just Shadow seeing where the tornado is, and he's like, yeah, they're, they're heading towards us. Also, you can see Pumpkin Hill in the background, that's kind of cool. Anyway, Eggman is waiting for Team Sonic inside the pyramid. Of course, he sets a trap for the Egg Golem, and let's see how Sonic takes care of this Egg Golem. One, And yes, according to Eggman's vision, Sonic defeats this Egg Golem in one hit, and that pisses the heck out of Eggman. I was waiting for Sonic and my hidden base to show him my awesome robot created to put that creep in his place. But that blue hedgehog eluded me again. Now he's on the attack, he's coming after me. Yes, now Eggman has to fight his own Egg Golem since it's malfunction, or maybe it's, who knows with this thing. Anyway, your main goal is to shoot the center and make sure the uh, little bullet points come out, but this boss was actually a lot more tricky with Eggman since, as you know, it's not going to easily equip, escape the quicksand. Well, Eggman really can't do that, so if he falls down there, even though there's a lot of new platforms down there, it's pretty tricky, plus his, his uh, power source can go down. It's harder to dodge it because Eggman's a lot slower than Sonic is, and he might accidentally fall to your death and Eggman might sink. For this boss fight, I recommend trying to avoid most of the attacks at all costs. I know it can be a lot harder said than done, but hey, just shoot a lot of him and eventually you'll destroy your Egg Golem creation. Yuck. So while Eggman's crying about Sonic getting away, Rouge actually sneaks, uh, actually passes password by actually getting him to give her the password. Really, does he know that she's trying to get information that he probably doesn't want her to get? Though, in researching Product Shadow, she discovers that the person that is called Shadow is not the ultimate life form, at least according to this documentation. But that doesn't matter because the Master Emerald's been sighted, and of course, she wants those jewels. I guess I'll just have to take the last piece of the Master Emerald. But that's not all I do. Those guys of yours were I returned from my secret mission. That means they've collected the remaining pieces of the Master Emerald. Now is my chance. I've retrieved the information about the secret project shadow. Now's my chance to grab the Master Emerald and dash. Even though Rouge works for Gun, she has her priorities set kind of straight wrong. After all, she just let the military base just blow up, even though it, it doesn't make any sense for her to do that, but whatever. Next stage, and the last Rouge stage, is Mad Space. Mad Space is similar to Meteor Herd, but with more gravity mechanics. And this stage used to be kind of annoying, but after playing it for a couple times, I finally figured out what to do. Uh, so essentially you got three rockets that send you into different little planets here and there. Welcome to Super Rouge Galaxy. You got a green two planet, little circular planet, a bigger circular planet, and the bottom of the space colony, as well as the very bottom of the space area. And essentially each of them could have a possible Chaos Emerald. Not Chaos Emerald, Master Emerald piece. Just go to transport to each planet by using the rockets designated in each area and dive bombing each area depending on where you are, and you'll be able to get pieces of the Master Emerald. The most annoying part is the very bottom part of the stage, which is similar to the uh, Meteor Herd, where you gotta s fly all the way around, except there's smaller platforms, but it's actually not too bad. I actually like Mad Space, alright? I'm gonna go mad, 
but I like Mad Space, all right? I know it's not a popular opinion, but if you played it for a while, this it's one of those things about this game. The more you play it, the better it is. The only thing I noticed about this game when replaying multiple times is how little the uh, Dark Side story actually offers compared to the Hero Side story, which is kind of lame. There's some cool elements in it, but it repeats a lot. It doesn't add a whole lot of inf new information as much as I thought it did when I first played this game as a child. Either way, we're going to need a new upgrade in this stage in order to do certain... You actually can skip this upgrade, technically speaking, but it's required. This is the Iron Boots, which allows you to break the metal crates, which is the only way to get off this planet if you need to. I actually didn't need to get off this planet. I was just trying to see where this last Emerald piece, which was kind of a weird spot, which is why I needed to make this activate this rocket. It's required to get to each different planets, but you can possibly skip it. And I don't think it's required for the final mission either. But yeah, you need to get those Iron Boots in order to crack open metal crates. And with that, we've collected all the pieces of the Master Emerald. Let's go on to the Knuckles boss fight, which has the same cutscene, so let's just skip to the Regis monologue about it. Get on my nerves! He is relentless about the Master Emerald, isn't he? Just give up! I will beat him up and take the Master Emerald! Hand over those Master Emeralds. Give them to me. Boss fight between Knuckles is exactly the same as it was between Rouge and Knuckles in the previous fight. So, yeah, you're basically doing the same things. You gotta hit him multiple times. You're the platform below you will rise, and then you gotta find a way to die bomb him without him using a special attack. It's pretty basic. So let's move on. But I must protect the Master Emerald. Now give back those jewels. As I mentioned before, this whole scene is pretty much the same as it was with Knuckles. So there's not a whole lot to say here. So let's skip it. It's a good cutscene, but we already seen it. Since he's been in the space colony for a while, Eggman notices that they have a fake emerald by using his radar technology. So of course he's gonna play a trap for all of them. He tells Shadow to wait here, and he will trap them. After all, he wants us to be his very greatest victim. You now is the time to end this long We are then in the last Eggman stage, Cosmic Wall, which if you play this game, you know this is the best stage, because there's anti-gravity. Instead of having gravity physics, they have anti-gravity, meaning every time you use your air post boosters, you go a lot higher, and because of that, the maze of momentum is a little bit better, meaning you can move faster and move farther. It's like the, uh, the f Final Rush version of Eggman level, which is pretty amazing. This stage rocks. There's a whole lot of enemies to shoot at. There's a whole lot of unique platforming that's fun to do, since you got a lot of wide range of movements. It feels like you move a lot, but there's also the design is built around it, so it's amazing. Uh, this stage is awesome. As the uh, text just said in the corner there, it is quite awesome. It's actually an easy power-up to get here. It's not required for the level at all, but you can grab it pretty easily. You hit this rocket right here, when going down this section here, and you float over here, and you can find a nice little upgrade. The protection armor. It adds, uh, you know, durability to your walker. and makes it look some more this stage is also quite long with a lot of unique elements, like this roller coaster ride where you get to shoot a bunch of stuff. So you're on rails, an on rail shooter, if you will. It's weird that such a level that's such late in the game would be one of the funnest levels. It's also one of the easiest to A rank, because every time I play this stage, I've always gotten an A rank. It's quite crazy, but yeah. If you play this stage before, you know that's quite fun, and it really showcases the uh, how great the mech stages can be at their best. I think they are the most my least favorite stage play style in the game. I feel like they could use a bit of tweaking. Like, the fact that when you're playing stream mode, it takes a while to get the boosters, which are the add a lot to the gameplay value. I know it's an upgrade in Sonic Adventure 1, but still, I feel like they could have used a bit of a boost. I think it's better than Gamma's storyline, because his was just too much, too little going on, since the levels are designed around it. And this time, it feels like, okay, we have more going on. Maybe Gamma's also better playing. Who knows? They're a little too slow. But other than that, I think the mech are perfectly fine and they get a, lot, a little bit too much hate they're fine they're fine they work and it's fun to get as much combos as possible it's not fun jumping out of the uh the pulley here but other than that it's great we also get another roller coaster ride where a drill's coming at us you just gotta shoot it and make sure it falls apart and yeah it's pretty easy you just shoot it and so it doesn't fall out onto you and it'll be perfectly fine now you know why i am the best 
we do get cutscene of Amy just kind of doing nothing here, being kind of awkward, and that's where we get to see Eggman put a gun straight to her head. Eggman's cocked and loaded. We then get to see the awesome cutscene again. I'm not going to replay it, but if you want to watch it, you can go back to that part of the video or look it up on here for yourself. You can look it up. You have the internet. <laughs> I love Eggman's reaction to Sonic dying. He is the happiest he's ever been right there. It's classic. Of course he would be. After all, that was the biggest pain in the ass for over 10 years at this point. Sonic's been causing nothing but trouble, and now he's finally killed him. Now he's going to kill his sidekick, too. And since you've already seen my uh, Hero Side storyline, I'm guessing we're watching this in order. If watching this out of order, we're watching it in order. But hey, now we can see Eggman fight Tails. It's basically the same thing as the Sonic, the boss fight in the other storyline. Uh, Eggman has more protection, so we got protection, so it's a little easier. Other than that, it's, it can be a little difficult. But hey, we defeat the Fox Boy, and that's all they're said and done. Yo! By the way, I love the fact that they usually have unique dialogues, but for some reason here, the other two Eggman boss fights, he'll just go, YOSH! <laughs> I don't know why that cracks me up. Usually be like, Tails like, I did it for you, Sonic! Here's Eggman's like, YOSH! So Rouge is about to steal the Chaos Emeralds after all. She didn't get the Master Emerald, but she will take these, especially since they're for bad guys. Six of them, they're mine! Oh my! I don't think Shadow! I think there's a mistranslation in dialogue, but I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, if Rouge just goes around saying I'm not, I'm, gov I'm a government spy, Rouge the Bat, or maybe Shadow's just saying you're a government spy, Rouge the Bat, comma, aren't you, Rouge the Bat? That that's what I'm interpreting it because other than that, it doesn't make any sense. Because it'll be so obvious. She's a spy, but she goes by her regular name and she gives that to them, but whatever. I like this cutscene. You see, Shadow's memories actually have been tampered with. He is actually Shadow, the real ultimate life form. That was just a prototype we're looking at. But he says even if they are fake, he will still go on believing what he believes since he is drawn by his desires and feelings over anything else. He's a very emotional character, and that's why he's emo. That was a little joke for you all. Now let's go into Shadow's final stage and our final stage of the Dark Side story. Finally, all the seven Chaos Emeralds are set. Set. I'm almost finished. All this time, someone's been trying to get at the Eclipse Cannon. There's no hope for him now. It's important we don't make any mistakes right now. I have to get rid of all those pests. Shadow's final stage is Final Chase. Basically, it's like Final Rush, except not as good. And I'll explain why. You see, while there's a lot of the similar mechanics, unfortunately Shadow has to deal with green gravity pipes, which are the bane of my existence. I'm sure you can escape them, but they're they're a little janky and their mechanics don't work that well. So I usually like to skip them like I just did there, where I was able to skip most of this green platform mechanics. Overall, this level is actually quite fun. I just wish that there was less of these green platforms. That's mostly the dang difference between Shadow's level and Sonic's level, is that these random green platforms are here. Luckily, you can do some spin dash jumps and you can avoid a lot of them. Nice. I love doing that. 
So like I said, much like Sonic's version of this level, you can do a lot of cool skips, and I love doing this, because it's actually intentional, is the thing people don't think. Like, oh, this does a glitch. No, they actually intend you to do this. They allow you to do unique stuff, because Sonic's cool like that. If you want to do something cool like that, do a little skip, then you can do it. And that's why I love this. The reason I don't like these green pipes is going up them it feels kind of awkward, and I kind of wish I didn't have to do it. It's not the worst thing in the world, it just feels a little not as good as it feels like it should be. And other than that, it's during the section here, you want to like go on top of these so you don't have to deal with their annoying physics. And that makes this area a lot easier. And you can do it because you obviously can run on top of them. I like that ability. You can just like do stuff you want to do. You don't have to worry about doing certain areas if you don't want to, if you know how to get past them. That's why I like this. Shadow section here also has a giant skip. You can do a nice spin dash, jump up here to get on top of these little platforms on the side, avoiding all these green little platforms there. And you can make a giant skip right here. This skips a lot of level. Your score bonus goes down if you're not doing tricks and stuff like that. But you know what? I think this looks cooler anyway. Now you go down the green pipes. And once you're down these green pipes, you'll finally make it to the end of the level. And you'll be able to find the person trying to stop the Eclipse Cannon. Sonic himself. The same cutscene that was playing in the Hero Story plays here. And it's actually shortened. It's not as good. It doesn't really matter. So let's see what Shadow thinks of Sonic and versus his final battle. It's that blue hedgehog is trying to destroy the Eclipse Cannon. I'm impressed. I thought he died in the capsule that was shot in his face. Now I know that blue hedgehog is dangerous. When I'm finished with him, he'll wish he died in the capsule. I'm gonna show him my real power. Alright, Shadow. Time for me to finish this. Shadow's final boss is the same as Sonic's final boss. You gotta do the same mechanics over and over again. The only difference is that Sonic has unique dialogues and his own version of attack. While Shadow used Chaos Spear against Sonic, Sonic used Sonic Win against Shadow, if that makes any sense. And yeah, basically you're doing the same thing. Also, Sonic just can freely do Chaos Control now. And during this boss fight, he does it all the time, as you can see there. Uh, his yelling of Chaos Control sounds a little goofy compared to Shadow. Use your Chaos I told you, I'm the ultimate. Now that Shadow has delayed Sonic, or maybe we don't really know the order of events, did Sonic get here first or did Eggman get here first? Anyway, I don't really know this whole story. Eggman puts his yellow Chaos Emerald into the, the device and it is set to go and he laughs maniacally. <laughs> As unique of an idea that Dark Story is, because of the merging of playstyles, it actually, you know, it's a little bit of a problem here. Since the Dark Story is mostly Eggman's mech stories, and that's what it's originally going to be, there's not a lot, there's very little speed stage with Shadow, and even, and actually, even, there's actually more treasure hunting stages with Rouge than there are speed stages with Shadow. Eggman has the most mech stages compared to uh, Tails, so we're playing a lot of those, and if you haven't told, mechs aren't my favorite stage in the game. I actually like them, but they're not my favorite, and some of the stages aren't that great. Like the Lost Colony stage, where it's all dark, or the first pyramid ever that air level's name, where it's all, where you don't have your jet boosters, so it's not that fun to play as. Though, of course, he has the best level being the last one, but other than that, it's not the best in the game. However, we got one final story that's going to put a cherry on top of this lovely Sunday. <laughs> The ultimate life form and of chaos vengeance. Space Super Untamed power. Chaos Sarah. Professor Gerald the truth about 50 years ago. Sonic Adventure 2. Last episode. Wishes are eternal. Once you beat Hero in Dark, you get the last story. You see, it turns out when Eggman put all seven Chaos Emeralds in, a uh, program ignited that Gerald Robotnik put in as the last solution that he wanted to do. As he makes an announcement to the world, an announcement not as famous as Eggman's announcement, as everybody who's badly pre-rendered gets scared of this while watching TV and gets praying from their mosque or whatever's going on down there. Are those guys mad that Eggman took over their pyramid? I have no idea. Anyway, Gerald Robotnik took over the Space Colony arc, and now it's going into freefall. 
he took over through an AI, basically, that was set once the seven chaos thermals were put in the arc, and now it's going to you know, collision course with Earth, and it's going to destroy Mobius or Earth, whatever it's called in this, I don't really know. Stick on team, make up your mind. All of you ungrateful humans who took everything away from me will feel my loss and despair. Is there anything else you want to say? No. Ready? What's going on here? All the characters have an argument about what's going on here. And Eggman's, of course, is shocked that Sonic is alive. You're pretty persistent for a hedgehog, aren't you? You're still alive. <laughs> Just letting Knuckles pilot the shuttle on the way over here was more dangerous than you could ever be. Anyway, they get more information about Joe Robotic through his diary that Rouge reads. See, it turns out 50 years ago, he was working for GUN, working on a project called the Ultimate Life Form, a weapon of ultimate destruction that he was researching about. And of course, they just got cold feet about it and decided to blame everything on him and basically killed a bunch of people, including one of them being his granddaughter, who was actually developing a cure for her uncurable cancer or whatever disease she had. It's uh, one of those diseases. And once he learned that not only was all his research destroyed and abandoned, and his own granddaughter, who was the only person he really loved, is dead because of them, he just gets goes crazy and decides that he's developed a plan for his second ultimate life form, his final project, Shadow, which he got into development near the end of his life. Right before he gets executed, he sets a plan in motion that once Shadow is activated, he will go back to Space Colony Ark, pull all seven Chaos Emeralds, making the Ark crash course into Earth, killing everybody in order to get revenge on everybody who basically fucked with him. Pretty dark storyline and kind of complicated, but I love it. Since they'd all be destroyed on the I um, this space station, as well as Eggman, who doesn't want the Earth to be destroyed, even though he was making a laser because, you know, he couldn't conquer anything, they decide that the best way is to go to the co cannon's core and put the Master Emerald there, so the Master Emerald has the same wavelength and properties as the Chaos Emerald. That should neutralize them like it did in past stuff. So, there we go. Let's get to work. Words. Just leave it to me. I'm the world's fastest hedgehog. Then, let's get to work. Final stage is Ken's Core. Ken's Core is split into sections between every character, well, except for Shadow. You start off with Tails as you're trying to get to the closer to the Ken's Core. You start kind of the space station, but the closer you get, the more ancient ruiny it feels. We'll get to a theory I have later on, and based off some confirmed evidence. Ken's Core is kind of a hard stage, but once you get to know it, it's not too bad. During Tails section, you got to uh, use your time things or just defeat some of the chaos enemies in the walls. A lot of robots are blocking the door's paths. And all sorts of junk like that. You also can just skip this elevator here and just jump, jump down and use these bombs to blow up the door, unless you misjudge it. The tails part of this part of the section is not very hard at all. You got a lot of time capsules that make it so it's not too difficult. It's a pretty short section of the level, and you should be able to make it through in time. During this section, you gotta use the time things in order to get on this platform and make sure the the little things are crashing down, land so you can jump on them at the perfect time to avoid the lasers. And you gotta shoot open the door so the next character can go through. And once you're done that, it's pretty basic and pretty easy. Keep in mind, there are some gun hunters there, so get out, get them out of the way, and you'll be good to go. Eggman also has a similar level to Tails, except his is a little more tricky-dicky on some certain areas. Like during this section, there's a bunch of green goo, and you gotta jump on these right platforms in the right area in order for them to go up. These can be pretty annoying, especially if you don't know what you're doing here. You can stay on this red part of the container and wait for one to pop up, but it's easier said than done. Uh, that's kind of annoying. Look at that. How did I miss that? You can find this section where if you hit that platform, you'll fall straight down. However, if you jump in this railing, you can go to this door. You'll find a little secret that's really only worth the if you actually have the, uh, the Mystic Melody, which I do not have, so I'm getting. To get to the platform here during Eggman stage is actually... Maybe I'm just an idiot, but it's kind of hard to time it just right. Yeah, once you get to it in the right plat area, like the nice pattern where the blocks are going to be taken to your advantage, it's not bad, but sometimes it doesn't. Lowly for Eggman, though, he doesn't deal with gun bots that are in the way, so you can just blast them in the door and move on to the next 
that character being Rouge is a pretty easy section. All she's got to do is climb up these poles, get rid of these poles, and climb them all the way to the top, and then hit a switch, which will start the pattern for her neck. Once you use this time switch, you want to go all the way down over here, and you go past this sand waterfall, and go on to the next session. You've got to hit this another switch over here, but keep in mind there's a lot of these annoying green sludge, and uh, I don't know what that is still, and those annoying black, black moving once you get past that, you get hit this switch, but then you gotta go back out. Actually, the switch is not there. The switch is right over this perfect chaos monster. I don't know what I'm talking about. That was a time switch. You open that up, and now you can hit that switch in order to pour, pour in some water. So you gotta go back through the tunnel. In order to do that, you gotta hit this time switch again and bounce yourself up during a quick time jump, but it's kind of hard to do, so sometimes your path is blocked, which sucks. Once you do, you want to run like crazy because that time is not of the essence here. Once you do that, you'll get some more uh, swamp water. I don't know why it's brown. Sand water, as gross as the water looks, Knuckles will keep diving down. What you want to do is dive down here. This is the part why I got made you get the air necklace because this area will become basically impossible without it. So you want to hit this time switch then dive all the way back up and then go over to the other side where you'll find the gate is now open. There's a gate there, but it's usually not. It will go away if you don't have the time thing. And you'll find a switch up here that you gotta go back and dive down under. And now you just go swim through this area, and then your knuckles level is becomes a little tricky. This is the part you really need the air necklace for, because you'll be underwater for a lot. So having without having to go find air bubbles, you can just don't worry about that since we have the air necklace upgrade. There is some time constrained areas here where you gotta use the time things to swim perfect time. It's not too tricky once you get the hang of the swimming mechanics, which are pretty good, actually, like I said. Actually, there was some more mechanic of this in the game, because it works very well. You want to dive, deep, do a deep dive into the aquatic mine, and here's another. This one right here is pretty tricky. Just follow this pattern, and you should be good to go, because this one is so tight, that's kind of insane. Once you're past all that, you'll find the next switch, and go on to the final section of the Crisis Core, or Cannon's Core level. Why did I say Crisis Core? It's Cannon. Next, we have Sonic, going deep into the cannon. As we can probably tell, the uh, whole area around us looks a little bit more ancient and less uh, spaceship. You can tell. It looks like it's based off something. As in fact, we see a lot of the same enemies, the artificial chaos, which is kind of weird. Less gun robots, a lot more chaos. Kind of weird, isn't it? Sonic section is actually pretty basic. Or in this part here, we got to hit this time switch above here in order to do a somersault underneath because they get blown away. It's pretty fun and pretty short and sweet. Nothing too much here, nothing too hard. Eventually you get to this part where you just want to dive over it and do a nice sliding down thing. Wait, that looks like the Mystic Ruin area level. Remember that? Hmm, strange. As a matter of fact, this whole area here reminds me of that the level, the uh, Lost World from Song Adventure 1. I wonder why they did this. It's not repeating because this is definitely a unique layout. Why are they doing this? And wait, that shrine looks oddly familiar. Remember back in Sonic Adventure, Sonic found this mural inside of this Lost World air level of perfect chaos. You see, Gerald Robotnik was studying ancient ruins in order to figure out what's the best way to make an ultimate life form. Seeing this, he thought that that must be one of the best ways of creating one, which is what he based the original ultimate life form off. Which is why we see this artificial chaos enemy ever, everywhere. They were made to study what chaos even is beforehand, using robots and stuff like that. These things are pretty strong after all. Using this, you created the Bio Lizard, the, the prototype to the ultimate life form, as we learn a little later. But how do we get the second ultimate life form? This one is just a fan theory, but since he, Bio Lizard is based off the, directly based off the chaos and perfect chaos, it doesn't come to surprise that this similar mural, mural might have existed. We mentioned this one in Sonic 3, but this is a fan theory that I believe is pretty much accurate. We see a guy protecting the Master Emerald, versus a weird blue the hedgehog. This is a mural predicting the future would happen in Adventure Sonic 3. One of the similar murals in the ancient ruins, and Gerald Robotnik saw this, seeing that it looks like using a Master Emerald or Chaos Emerald, him created an ultimate being. The ultimate being would later be Shadow. So indirectly, Sonic or Super Sonic is based off Shadow. Of course, this makes sense. Shadow's quills are upright similar to Super Sonic. So this theory, I feel like, is... I 100% believe this one, even if it's not confirmed, that's why I'm putting in my video, that Shadow is indirectly based off this old mural of Super Sonic, which I think is a cool idea. And when everyone's helping out, Amy's like, what are you doing here, Shadow? You gotta help us. But Shadow's like, this is the plan all wrong. There's no reason to stop it now, and I can't even do it now. Anyway, but Amy's like, you gotta help people out. They may seem bad, but sometimes they're good. That's her whole argumentation. But something 
about her words clicks with shadow as he remembers his memories for the first time. His memories have been changed by Jell Robotnik after having this whole mission set up, so it was altered to make him believe what Gerald believed. But Shadow remembers what Maria actually told him the day she died. Shadow, I beg you, please do it for them. Give them a chance. Shadow, I beg of you, please do it for me. Maria, for all people who live on that planet, give them a chance to be happy. Give them Saki Knuckles notices that the shrine there looks exactly like the Master Emerald one, which we've seen, of course, in Sonic Adventure 2. And, of course, Garnet, much like it was Guardian Adventure 1, was a giant lizard monster. This time it was created rather than being a god. This thing is... It hasn't shown up yet, but it's going to appear on the Pokemon. Well, this thing looks like a monster. If you couldn't tell by the previous dialogue, which I haven't played yet, so you don't know, it has the memories of Jailed Robotnik. So quite literally, it's he's controlling this random lizard, even though he's already dead. And yeah, this is the Bio Lizard, which is a really weird looking thing. I know, how do you get from a giant lizard to a little hedgehog? But I explained it in my little video. It's, they're all connected, all right? It's like poetry, they rhyme. Shadow decides to face his previous form in order to help s save the day after learning his true purpose. Leave this one to me. I'll take care of this while you run to get the Chaos Emerald. This is the Bio Lizard, the second to last thing you'll do in Song Adventure 2. Well, if you don't replay the levels, that is, but the main storyline, that is. Anyway, the Bio Lizard is going to try to chase after Shadow with both his head and his tail, depending on which direction you are. You gotta get past his phase, and eventually he'll let you grind on his little rails, which are pipes, I guess, to go to his core there, and you homing tech into it, and it damages the Bio Lizard, who is a really ancient deity that has just been hanging around here. He's a very uh, interesting looking character design, I'll say that at least. As I said, he's loosely based off Chaos, but kind of in a unique way, after all. Uh, they didn't f fully design this creature, and he was the only thing that was left on file, as they Gerald specifically wanted Shadow in the government as well not to be on file, which is why they were able to f wasn't able to find anything about the actual Shadow, the ultimate life form. And this disgusting creature is the only thing that was left. It's going to shoot black balls at you in the second phase, and they're kind of annoying to dodge, but jump over them, dodge over them, click your rings, and you should be fine, and then you'll be able to grind back on top and hit them, unless you do what I do. A couple phases later, the Bowser will just scream in agony as it shoots some purple balls, or pink balls, wherever you will, at Shadow. you got to homing tech these in order to get to the top using momentum. It's easier said than done, especially when you feel like you're losing your rings here. But don't worry, this boss is a little tricky if you don't know what you're doing, but I'm going to help you out. Can we tuck these balls and try to get yourself all the way to the top until you can hit the bot? Rinse and repeat until you finally do it again. And at this point, the bio lizard will immediately make you go into the final phase, which actually just skipped a lot of hassle. So thank you for doing this. So eventually you'll float up a little bit, and all you gotta do is aim yourself towards the center, which is pretty easy. So yeah, thank you for doing that, bio lizard. You're toast. So Sonic and Knuckles are trying to make their way up in order to stop this thing. Rivers are the seven chaos. Chaos is power. Power is enriched by the heart. The controller is the one that unifies the chaos. Only you can do it. Stop the chaos emerald. Fortunately, the bylaws are a little harder to take out as it tries to attack. Using the ability of chaos control, which is something it can do. You ever see a giant lizard chaos control before? Even though the Master Emerald has stopped the Chaos Emeralds by neutralizing them and bringing them there, uh, the, the Bio Lizard Chaos controlled onto the bottom of the ship, causing its crash course to continue. Sonic and Shadow know what to do. Sonic, even though he's never seen Shadow go super, is like, can you go super? And he's like, yeah, I can. And Knuckles is like, wait, I can go super too. Oh, I guess I'll stay out of this one. They bring their hands together, united for once, not against each other, but as 
non-rivals anymore. They bring the Chaos Emeralds, and they do a very weird motion with their hands. I don't know why they do that. Between Sonic and Shadow, we get probably one of the most iconic boss fights in Sonic history. Of live and learn, the main theme playing in the background is all the characters like you gotta save the world from being being destroyed. It's an upgrade from the last game, which is a city being destroyed. Well, I guess Chaos could destroy the world, but this one is quite literally trying to destroy the world. So Sonic and Shadow, who you swap between after you do a hit on him, or you purposely go over the Bio Lizard to swap because your rings are running out. You get 15 rings, and they slowly go down. Bio Lizard will shoot lasers at you and balls later on. It can get pretty tricky, dicky. I think it's controls pretty well, just the knockback from each of these attacks are just so annoying, it's hard to get back up to the peak speed you're at. I'm not the biggest fan of this boss fight, well sometimes I feel like I can do a pretty good job when taking it out, and other times I struggle a lot. But, you know, yeah, I got nothing else to say other than you press A and B to go up or down really fast, but it doesn't really affect your speed that much. Just try to avoid it, and uh, keep in mind you can always go over the bio lizard. I recommend doing it if you're near 20 or in your teens and rings, yeah, you're playing a Sonic and Shadow. Overall, after a couple hits to its little pink uh, boil, I guess, it will finally go out and you'll finally save the day. Did you really think you had a chance? This is what you wanted, right? This is my promise I made to you. So, somehow Shadow dies. I don't really know how he did, but hey, who the heck knows? Shadow falls to his death, and everyone assumes he's dead. Well, until the next game comes out, and he's alive. And all the people, the, the horribly rendered, pre-rendered people, are celebrating. They're hugging, they're kissing, they're praising their gods, or whatever, I don't know. The blonde pigtail girl is happy as well, I guess. Is that Station Square? I don't really know. Nor does it really. And the game ends of all the characters just casually talking to themselves about what's happened and about Shadow or what Gerald Robotnik really was and all the other stuff. It's actually pretty great and casual. And I guess they have one of Shadow's cuffs there? I don't know. Whatever. That's the end. I quite like this ending a lot. Do you really think that the professor created him? Oh, Shadow? To carry out the revenge on all those who live here on Earth? He was what he was. A brave and heroic hedgehog. He gave his life to save this planet. Shadow the Hedgehog.
And that is the end of Sonic Adventure 2. Though not the end of this video. I've got a lot more to cover. A lot more. I forgot to mention the people, the some of the songs, the Knuckles levels. They weren't really that noteworthy. They're good. Uh, I only mentioned the uh, first two because they're unique enough. Anyway, uh, I love Sonic Adventure 2. Though I will admit there is a couple problems. But when it comes to replayability is what really matters. The story, I think the dark side story lacks a little bit. You can tell based off that uh, the original the concept of, oh yeah, we gotta make these three new character storylines with two... It kind of messed up a little things, though I think the levels for the most part hold up incredibly well and incredibly replayable. In fact, there's a lot of side content, which makes this game great. And the story overall is pretty amazing. Other than the fact there's a little bit too much recap in each of the stories, you play one, you're like, oh, this re I already saw this in this storyline. Other than that, I think the story, this is amazing. I love this game quite a lot. A new day brings new adventure. But for now, rest easy, heroes. They're predicting Sonic Heroes beforehand. You see that? We also get to see Shadow on the, the Earth, I guess, or Mobius. He didn't die, though, so it doesn't really matter. Real quick, I want to showcase where you can get some of the optional upgrades. So you want to go back to see Escape once you have the ability of the Flame Ring. And you go to these boxes right down here, you jump down, and you get one of the most useless items in the game, but I have no idea why they even put it in here. This item is... The Magic Gloves. It allows Sonic to uh, basically take enemies and throw them back at each other, I guess, by using your, your extra button. You can use have the ability to make Sonic do a different ability. And for this one, you just hit it again, and it rises to the magic hands, and you can throw, I guess, enemies back at each other. They're magic. So in Green Forest, you want to go behind yourself right in this section here, and you'll find the Ancient Light. Remember, the Ancient Light was an ability that Sonic had in Sonic Adventure 1, and it allows Sonic to charge up a spin dash and tag out multiple enemies, sort of like the light speed dash. It's not that useful as sometimes it is, but it's pretty cool they brought back this power up here. Look at that, charge it up, and get some items. You also can find the Mystic Melody in Final Rush near over here in this section. It's not too hard to find, it's near an alternate rail. And this is something that all characters have, and if you see these emerald shrines, you Sonic will play a little note, and it'll activate something. Like here, we find a trailer rings. This is required for all the last child missions. Knuckles' mystic melody can be found in his first stage. You want to glide over, over here and dig through this area here. And once you do that, you'll find the mystic melody, which does the exact same thing. as The last Knuckles upgrade, you want to go back to Meteor Herd and punch this boulder. I guess I could have done this when I was playing Meteor Herd, but at the time I was like, eh, who cares? You hit this switch, and the bomb of this area here will unlock a new area. Only the bomb of this tower full of lava, you'll find a pretty inch cool update upgrade. It's sunglasses. It gives the ability of Knuckles to find secret items if he presses a certain button. It's uh, not very useful other than certain mission, secret, secret missions, so other than that, it's neat, but it's not. For Tails' first optional upgrade, you got to go back here and get a nice little shoot on an enemy there and we'll unlock this area which you need obviously a bazooka or get past and once you do that you'll find this upgrade right here at the very end of the level this is the laser blaster which i actually don't remember what it does i think it makes your missiles more powerful i don't really know uh, i'm using fo additional footage here i will hopefully have that linked in the description because i didn't go back to during tales of pyramid level you want to go all the way down to this section here and you'll blast open crates and you'll find the mystic melody for him right there Near the beginning of Shadow's Reckle Highway, you'll find this left pathway over here, and this will give Shadow his Flame Ring, which does the exact same thing as Sonic's. Shadow's next upgrade is in Sky Rail, which you want to take this left pathway where it goes straight ahead. With this, you'll find a new power-up that Shadow has. Well, it's the Ancient Light. Nothing too special here. We've seen this before. This does exactly the same thing as Sonic's version. You climb up this, this tower here on the other side, past the electric fence, and you find Shadow's Mystic Rude's Mystic Melky is really easy to find. You go directly to the right in this area here, you dig through that, you'll immediately find it. Anyway, Eggman's Mystic Melody you can find pretty early in the game. In fact, this gives you a giant shortcut in this level. Just hover over here once you get the booster, and you get, and get it right away. The last Rude's uh, upgrade you can get, you need the Mystic Melody for, so you need to play a little tune. And this will create platformers, which will lead you over to these iron grates, which is where the treasure scope that Rouge needs in order to see treasure, much like Knuckles' version of sunglasses. Though I do like these upgrades, because they look really cool. Also, I don't know why they thought it would be a good idea to have the boo bounce every time you get an upgrade as Rouge. Was that necessary, game developers? Was it? Our last upgrade you need 
for you can get in the game is the laser blaster. This thing, which also increases your, I guess, blast rate or something. It looks cool, that's all that matters. There are a couple cool modes, like you can use kart racing, and you can unlock kart abilities based off of you beat characters, A rank, and stuff like that. All the, there's like three ranks, and you gotta uh, do them in order to get 100% in order to, you gotta win them. So you can choose all the characters, and each character has their own alternate skin based off of how many, uh, if you beat their, all their levels or not. If you A rank them, you get the alternate kart. One of them's Egg Robo, which is really weird, and playing as a Chow. And they all have unique stats. You can play as a multiplayer too, so that's pretty cool. There's also boss rush mode where you either play through all the hero bosses, all the dark side bosses, or all of them together. You need to do these if you want to get an emblem as well, so just keep that in mind. There's also a multiplayer mode where you can play through some of the speed stages, transronic stage, or mech stages. With two alternate characters being Amy and Melsunk for the racing here. They're mostly shortened versions of the levels you've seen in the game. For example, the snowboarding section which adds snow to San Francisco where you have to race against the other player. It's pretty Oh, and here's Amy and Mel, Sonic, how they play. They're slightly different stat-wise than they, their other characters, so keep that in mind when playing. Sonic and Shadow play exactly the same, but Amy and Mel, Sonic have different stats. If you collect rings, you also can stop the player in their path, which is also neat. This is also where you can also get alternate costumes based on how much you completed, like Sonic and Shadow have nice little suits here. The mech ones are just usually just shooting each other rather than actually playing the level. Uh, this you can only play as Tails, Eggman, as well as a weird Chow Walker and Dark Chow Walker. The last one is the Treasure Hunting, where he first plays Knuckles Rouge and two new characters, Decol and Chaos. Yes, you can play as Decol and Chaos, and that's just pretty awesome. Yeah, Chaos looks a little weird here. He looks a little more chunky than he did in Sonic Adventure 1, but it is super cool to see both of them being playable, especially after seeing them throughout the entire game of Sonic Adventure 1. Oh, in case you're wondering, here's the alternate outfits. Uh, they're wearing, like, weird suits, that's okay, and what the hell is Rouge wearing? Uh, yeah, that is weird. Also, Tails just gets a red paint job while Eggman's, like, wearing all this black and stuff. Well, Tails like, yeah, I just painted my tornado red. Well, I covered a lot, but I feel like I'm missing one thing. Oh, how could I forget? The Chow Garden. So, since there's no help world, how do you get the Chow Garden? Well, in each of the L character's levels, there are three Chow boxes you gotta find. Here is one in City Escape. You go on top of these stairs all the way to the top right. They're pretty easy, hard to miss since they're bright blue. Each character, in order to get to them to the Chow Garden, you gotta do each of their levels. So here's one for Sonic. You gotta collect it, and once you get to the end of the level, you'll go to the Chow Garden. You'll end up in this weird space hub with some interesting music. The Sonic Adventure 2 battle one's weirder, but you're not hearing it here. It just sounds really strange. For some reason, in these games, the Chow Garden is the one that gets changed the most. In fact, the Chow Garden here is a lot worse than the battle, and... There's not a whole lot to showcase here, but I will showcase more of the battle mode in just a second. So here we go, we got two Chow Gardens, we got a Dreamcast thing, and of course you can only see your Chow stats in the VME, which kind of sucks, and all that jazz. So yeah, you gotta hatch your Chow Egg, much like we did in the Sonic Adventure 1 here, and they'll grow up. One thing I noticed about this is that Sonic has all his moves in this Chow Garden compared to the Adventure 2 battle where they remove some of them so you don't accidentally spin dash your Chow all the time. Which I was having trouble doing here. And one of the new mechanics of the Chow Garden is that if you pet your Chow with a hero character, they will begin to change a little bit. There's this new thing called Hero and Dark Chows. Much like the game itself, the Chows are separated by this, and they will evolve based off their tra stats. So you've got a Chow that has mostly heroic things after they eat a certain amount of fruit, which feeding them fruit is kind of hard since they take forever and they'll pick you their fruit. Eat your fruit, you little Chow! Anyway, you can see the chow starts to change the color the more I pet it here, because it's changing into a pure chow. Now, if, sh now, if you want to beat it up, it will actually become more of a dark chow, but then it can also have a possibility of not reincarnating. Chows can reincarnate as well as evolve, and when they evolve, they become, well, wherever chow they are. If they're in the middle, we're both ne neutrally loved by a hero and dark chow, not anyone more in particular, they'll become a neutral chow. If you want to get certain chow types, this is useful. To say the least, there's a bunch of different types of chows your chow can look like. Interestingly enough, you can see here, if you get a neutral run or a neutral fly chow, they'll become a Knights and Sonic chow, which is super cool, actually. Here is all the hero chows that they look like. They're all angels, by the way, if you couldn't tell by their all their designs. And these are all the dark chows. 
And if you couldn't tell, the, if you got a run Dark Chow, you'll get a Shadow Chow, which is pretty cool. There's all their character Chows, but they're actually really hard to get in the game. Like a Tails, Amy, and Knuckles. You can get a Tails one for connecting a Fancy Star online to your GameCube by using a GBA connector, which also requires you to have a copy of Sonic Advance. So, and you have to be a certain mission in that game. So, that's a very expensive and very hard thing to do. So, sort of like getting Celebi in Gen 3. It's just something that just super difficult, and Knuckles and Amy are only events. They're all all gone, so you can't get them in game unless you use a mod version. So this is where I talk about all the differences between the Dreamcast and GameCube version. There's quite a little nitpick things, but the Child Garden is the most changed one. Even the uh, hub here, the GBA versus the VMU here. One of the biggest things is that the VMU has different designs, which kind of sucks because they look pretty cool. For example, in the Hero Garden, the VMU has a nice little hero shrine. Well, it looks exactly the same as it does in the regular version, game, the regular Chow Garden in the GameCube version. I especially love the VMU in the uh, the Dark Garden. It looks amazing. The uh, Hero Garden looks completely different in the Dreamcast version compared to the GameCube version. It looks really shocking. There's a whole, like, paths and stuff like that. It looks pretty neat, but I'm guessing they didn't want the whole thing to be just a whole pond. I, I guess I kind of prefer the Dreamcast version, but I understand why they changed it. It's just kind of weird that they would just change that so drastically. Here's a Dark Garden, which has a couple trees and a whole cave and stuff here. Oh, it's pretty neat here, actually. Jeez, we actually kind of prefer... Look at this. We got a nice little cave. It's cool. That's a neat... I love that. That's so neat. For some reason, the Dark Chow Garden is so much emptier in the GameCube version. I have no idea what the point of this was. I guess they got, maybe it'd be too confusing to find your Chow, but no one uses the Dark Chow, Chow Garden anyway, because it looks kind of lackluster and kind of scary, I'll be honest. Also, uh, yeah, Tails can uh, drown in these pools. He's the only character that can drown, which is really fun. The Dreamcast Kindergarten also has a different layout with an interesting center desk, which the obviously the GameCube version does not have, though it's mostly the same other than that. The biggest change is that now the Chow Garden can connect it to a separate game, that being the uh, GBA game Sonic Advance, which allows you to transfer your Chow as well as get items from there, which is pretty cool. I recommend watching this video, which I'll link to the description that showcases a lot more changes between the ver both versions, so I don't have to go through it, because uh, I'll be here all day. There's a lot different opposity s stuff, some detectors that didn't work over in the, the GameCube version works in the Dreamcast. Uh, there's some fic bug fixes in the GameCube version that were persistent in the Dreamcast version. You know, a little stuff like that. The life mode. We're going to take a look at Song Adventure 2 Battle on the GameCube. The reason I'm doing this is to showcase some of the changes that you will not be able to see on computer. I want to get my own footage, but I don't have a better way to do it other than this. This is going to be a short section anyway. For example, you can select which stage you want to do and all the mission side missions once you beat the game. And of course, this is what it looks like when you have all the A ranks. Now let's go to the Chow Garden and go more in depth with the Chow Garden with Sonic. This is the Chow Garden hub. Here is your main Chow Garden, as well as the Hero Garden, which is up here on the stairway to heaven, quite literally. Or you can go to the basement to hell, depending where you want to go. Let's go to our regular Chow Garden. Here you'll find a lot of Chows, as well as some items that you unlock if you complete all the races and stuff like that. You'll find quite a lot of Chows, including this random one here that I made a long time ago, because it transferred over to my GameCube memory cards. Isn't that nice? So mostly you can do similar stuff you did in Sonic Adventure 1. You can shake trees to give you fruit. Fruit raises the Chow stamina. I recommend watching my Sonic Adventure 1 video if you haven't already. Here's a Shadow Chow that hasn't been fully developed yet. Just shame. Through here is how you actually get to the races, as well as Chow Karate. There are tons of races here, but the only ones that matter for completion are Beginning Race, Jewel Race, Challenge Race, Hero Race, and Dark Race. Beginning Race is the smaller parts of the regular races, yeah, regular regular races, which can be found in Jewel Races, which are the main big race tracks. Challenge Races are uh, weird races that allow you to race against weird animals and stuff like that, with your Chows. And Hero and Dark are just races against... Your only can only be hero ch race can only be done by a hero chow, and they race against dark chow. And dark races can only be done by he hero dark chows. So they race against hero chows. These actually are pretty easy. You know they're down the line. Uh, the hardest one being jewel race. Your chows will start off in the racing line already. Depending on their uh, stats, there they'll either get up or they will do what they're supposed to. Fortunately, my chow's stats is laying down. Now sometimes that means it can be lazy, and chows have hidden stats like lazy, I think laziness or luck. Anyway, since my child is maxed out, he'll win the race. See, for this stat here, you can't really change. No, it's a luck stat, which means a child can get unlucky and get a giant head here and get them blocked. Luckily for me, my child, who's known as Sinos, didn't have that problem. Also, in the top bar here, we have our stamina meter. If you press the A button, 
that means our Chao will move, start to move. However, we're, we're limited stamina. Stamina is the hardest thing to max out since Chao's are picky with their food, as I mentioned earlier. So that's why I didn't max out my Chao stamina stat, even though I maxed out pretty much everything else. A new mode known as Chao Karate. Chao Karate has a tournament and interleague game. There isn't a whole lot of modes in comparison. Of course, the interleague game is just the uh, versus mode here. And for here, we only have four modes, beginner, standard, and expert, and super. Here, you can't do much other than the fact that when your child loses stamina, you need to match the A button. And basically, depending on your stats, the child will do better. Like, speed moves makes their speed moves that make better. Swim it increases their defense. Power obviously makes their attacks stronger. And stamina is about their health. So it's basic stuff like that. And overall... If once you get your Chao stats maxed out, it's not too bad. I recommend speed for all parents. All these stats which is why I made a Sonic Chao. One, because Sonic's a fair character, and I always wanted to do that as a child. And, yeah. One thing you'll also notice is that you can play as Tails and Eggman, and they will be out of their mechs. So Tails plays like how you did in Sonic Adventure 1. Just not as fast. And he can even fly. I can fly. Can you fly? I don't want this night shot that I worked very hard for. Well, you can go your GBA transporter. This is the Hero Garden, which has my heroic Chows. Actually, they're both neutral. But hey, I have them here. Where you can take a nice lovely bath and Tails, yes, you can drown. I think right here, so keep that in mind. Tails is a short guy, okay, right? This is a nice little chow garden, nice relaxing. Here's my lovely Sinos, who is my pride and joy. And, of course, when your chows do well in races, they get a little badge there, depending on which one they did. Now, as you can see, there's an animal here. And I'm going to show you how to get your chow stats maxed out pretty easily. So you want them to be kind of like this. Let me see if we can do this one-handed. You want to place them from a distance. And he grabs it, but I can still pick it up and give it to him again. This is an easy way to max your child stats out. I was just going to become a generic Sonic child, but because he started changing, because he was not fully that, he started to get some his quills went up right a little bit. So I decided that I was going to give him this purple dragon, since I'm a big fan of purple dragons, since Spyro is one of my favorite characters. He even does a nice little bow there. Isn't that cute? Anyway, yeah, that's all there is to say about this Chow Garden. However, maybe I don't like my Chow. What happens when that happens? It's how you drop off to this, uh, the Game Boy Advance, but you can also choose the option, Goodbye. Chow will have a happy life in a faraway forest. You'll never see your Chow again. This is the only option if you run out of Chow space, since each, each three, all three gardens are limited. However, I'm not doing that because I'm not a masochist, alright? Right, Chows do age and time does pass. How does time pass? Well, every three hours in real life is an, a year in Chow's span. And they will evolve into final forms based on how many they, they feed, a second form after that. And depending on how well they're raised, if they're happy in life, they will reincarnate in an egg and they'll gain most of their stats back. So pretty neat and pretty nifty. Also, this is what Eggman looks like in the Chow Garden. And for some reason, this man can move super fast for some reason. Like, Jesus, look at this fat man go. Anyway, let's go to the Dark Garden. This is what Eggman bikes. He's too short to do this. But this cage, you can basically lock any character you want in that is an Eggman, I guess. He's, he's too short. But yeah, all you gotta do is jump right into it. And you can cage yourself. I mean, it's kind of funny, isn't it? Here's the Dark Garden. As we mentioned before, it's very similar. You have a ball in here, which is nice. Eggman can play catch. I don't know if I even have a chow in here. Yeah, I don't look like I, don't look like, doesn't look like I have a chow in here. So this garden is kind of scary, actually. One interesting thing you can do in this garden. This thing here is the Chow Garden and Kindergarten, which is very useful. So let's go take our Chow to Kindergarten. And this is where they get to learn all sorts of neat stuff. In the Dreamcast version, there's a desk here, but the, the here is not. Just a couple little things we can do. The most important thing is the black market. You can sell items if you have anything on your hand. But shopping, you can buy eggs. The more emblems you get, the better the eggs are. You can get shiny eggs. These, a lot of these eggs are rare. Uh, chow fruit is very useful if you didn't know the glitch because it gives their chow the ability to eat as much as they want. They say the chow likes certain fruit based on the doctor's report. However, they don't really seem to do much for me. The seeds here can grow trees, which grow certain fruit. However, you need the uh, shovel and pail in, uh, in order to grow them for your chow doing the races. Just to let you know. There's a couple of little interesting things like why is a pair of bag 4,000 rings? And yeah, you can find some interesting stuff. For example, you can find interesting upgrades like the uh, talk, the uh, the option icons here, but they are very expensive. They are there, so keep that in mind. Those items are randomized, so even if you have certain element requirements, the night might, might not be there, so you gotta keep resetting. Anyway, let's take a look at what the classrooms will have to offer here, since these weren't in the adventure, D adventure game. 
classroom, you can take your chow to learn something. For example, here, they're learning a song. So if I left my chow here, it would sing once I took it back after a while. This was something that they would do in the regular adventure one by just feeding them animals. But here, yeah, they have to learn it in the class. The principal's office just teaches you some notes, but there's a lot to learn. So I guess you might need to do that. Clinic, you go to this quack doctor and you can see if your child's sick or not. It's very rare for your child to be sick, just to let you know. But the most important thing is they can do a medical chart, which tells you your chat's child's stats based off all their things, their dark, their ability type, how good their their egg stats are. It doesn't tell you their luck, their personality, what their child likes, their age, times they're transformed, and all this other stuff. So it's pretty cool, including all their race and attributes. Pretty Working teller is kind of annoying, since she'll give your child a name, but she'll first have to give you one of her names before you can actually uh, do it. Which is really annoying. It's like Cosmos? No. Really you don't like this name? And then you say you have to say no again in order to name your child yourself. Why won't you want to name your child yourself? Obviously I'm not changing this name, but hey, stupid. And that's all there is to say about the child garden. It's pretty neat, it's pretty cool, and it's fun to hang around. I spent hours playing this and getting my one child in order to be all the races. It's super fun, it's Sega. Why did you not bring it back? Everyone likes it, no one hates it, so why why? Why don't you bring it back? Next we have the bear, which is purple. It can be found in Crazy Gadget, Egg Quarters, White Jungle, and Sky Rail, as well as Cannon's Core. It gives the chow arms, ears, and feet, apparently, which is pretty cool. It can also give the alert ability behavior roaring. As the stat boost is a plus eight in swim, minus 16 in flying. Yes, yeah, some of these can give minus, only the animals do that. A plus 4 run, plus 36 in power, plus 20 intelligence, and plus 20 in luck. Next we have the boar, which can be found at Pumpkin Hill, Mission Street, Eternal Engine, Radical Highway, Lost Colony, and Cannon's Core. The root section, that is. It's a run type. It can give the chow hooves, ears, tail, and tusk. It gives the chow the learned behavior of dashing. It gives minus 4 swim, minus 12 fly, plus 32 run, plus 16 power, plus 20 intelligence, and plus 20 luck. Then we have the Cheeto, can be found in Wild Canyon, Pumpkin Hill, Green Forest, Radical Highway, Weapons Bed, Cosmic Wall, as well as Cannon's Core. It is a run child that gives the child arms, ears, feet, and tail, as well as the learned ability of face washing. The stat boost is minus 8 swim, minus 8 fly, plus 40 run, plus 8 power, plus 20 intelligence, and plus 20 luck. The next animal is the Condor, which can be found in Wild Canyon, Aquatic Mine, Pyramid Cave, Eternal Engine, Final Rush, Security Hall, Sky Rail, and Cannon's Core. It's a flying one that gives the child ears, feet, tail, and wings. Learn behavior is flapping wings, which is pretty neat. Plus 20 swim, plus 60 fly, minus 24 run, plus 16 power, plus 20 intelligence, and plus 20 luck. Next, we got the dragon, which is actually a rare animal. Just to let you know, some of these are rarer than others. This can be found in Wild Canyon, Aquatic Mine, Eternal Engine, Final Rush, Iron Gate, White Jungle and Cannon's Core. It's part of the legendary group. And the learned behavior is breathing fire. The parts acquired are arms, ears, feet, tail, horns, and wings. It gets plus 20 swim, plus 4 fly, plus 8 run, plus 32 power, plus 20 intelligence, and plus 20 luck. Here's one of the weird animals. Half fish looks like the creature from the Black Lagoon here, which is pretty a uh, weird looking guy. I don't know if I want to capture this little thing. Anyway. It appears in Pumpkin Hill, Green Forest, Hidden Base, and Egg Quarters. It doesn't really do a whole lot, though it will turn a motion ball into a flame, which is really interesting. The learned behavior is none. It gives plus 32 swim, zero fly, plus 8 run, plus 24 power, plus 20 intelligence, and plus 20 luck. Next we have the Phoenix, which can be found at Metal Harbor, Mission Street, Meteor Herd, Crazy Gadget, Weapons Bed, Security Hall, Sky Rail, Mad Space, Final Chase, and a Cannon's Core. It's another one of those legendary little uh, animal buddies. They give the child's feet, forehead, tails, and wings. Learn behavior is tail wagging. They give plus 20 little swim, plus 32 fly, plus 4 run, plus 16 power, plus 20 intelligence, and plus 20 luck. We then have a blue raccoon guy. He can be found in City Escape, Metal Harbor, Green Forest, Eternal Engine, Sand Ocean, Rackle Highway, Lost Colony, Security Hall, Mad Space, Cannes Core, and Green Hill. He gives Chow's arms, ears, feet. Learn behavior is spinning around, plus 12, 20 swim, plus 16 fly, plus 4 run, plus 8 power, plus 20 intelligence, and plus 20 luck. It seems like the luck and intelligence seem exactly the same in all these. 
The skeleton dog is among the most unique animals here, seeing as it gets a special ability, gets rid of the other animal parts. If you don't like the animal parts, you can get rid of them by using the skeleton dog, which could be pretty useful, especially since the skeleton dog himself also has unique parts. The skeleton dog will be found in Pumpkin Hill, Pyramid Cave, Death Chamber, Sand Ocean, and Lost Colony. It removes all parts and allows hats to be worn, apparently. Plus 8 swim, plus 8 fly, plus 32 run, plus 16 power, plus 28 intelligence, and plus 20 luck. We then have the Tiger, which can be found in Prison Lane, Hidden Base, Death Chamber, Crazy Gadget, Iron Gate, Security Hall, Sky Rail, Final Chase. They are a power type, and they give arms, ears, feet, and tail. Their learned behavior is they sharpen their nails, apparently. It gives minus 8 swim, minus 16 fly, plus 20 run, plus 36 power, plus 20 intelligence, and plus 20 luck. And our last uh, animal buddy here is the Unicorn. You found in City Escape, Prison Lane, Radical Highway, Dry Lagoon, Cosmic Wall, and Green Hill. They are legendary. They give hooves, ears, horn, and tail. The learned trait is bucking, apparently. They have sap boost or plus 16 swim, plus 12 run, plus 36 run. This, uh, I, missed that. I said that wrong. Let me do that again. Plus 16 swim, plus 12 fly, plus 36 run, zero power, plus 20 intelligence, plus, plus 20 luck. I'm done this part. And instead of going through all of these, here are all the things that you can get at the black market. As you can see, it changes quite a lot. Take your time to read or go to the Sonic News Network in order to get more information here. There is quite a lot of stuff here, a lot of unique eggs, and a whole lot of other crap in between here, there, and everywhere. There's a lot of eggs, if you couldn't tell. And that is it. To 100% of this game, I also unlocked this question mark stage you'll find here at the bottom. This was for the 10th anniversary, being Green Hill. At the time, this was pretty cool, but nowadays, we've seen this stage a bunch of times. Essentially, this is a recreation of the... <coughs> you try to play it one-handed. This is a recreation of the first level of Sonic, pretty much verbatim. It has all the same enemies, except for Motobug, has Buzz Bombers, and all the other stuff. It's pretty neat, actually. I quite like this stage. Chop... I think it only has Buzz Bomber and Choppers, though, unfortunately. But yeah, it works like it did in, in the 2D games, except now we're in the third dimension. Some people, fans might have wanted Sonic to be like this in general, but I'm kind of glad the way he went. It was nice to have a little bit of a change. Sonic is supposed, supposed to be an edgier character after all, compared to Mario, so it made sense that this game's got a little darker. And plus, we got really cool mouse stories and fun stuff. It was always going to be a little bit lighter Sonic games. In fact, Sonic Advance, which came out around the same time as Sonic Adventure 2, did have a layer take that felt more like the classic games. Keep in mind, I'm playing one-handed, so that's why I suck. Good, Hedgehog. Subject B. Evil Hedgehog. Introducing Shadow from Sonic Adventure 2. Now you can choose to be Sonic, the good hedgehog, and try to save the world. Or Shadow, the evil hedgehog, and conquer it. What kind of hedgehog are you? <laughs> Rated E for everyone, only on Dreamcast. Due to its limited release, since Sega Dreamcast was basically a dying console and they discontinued it pretty much that same year, Sonic Adventure 2 on Dreamcast is actually a pretty hard game to find. As you can see, it loses $80 with a complete price of $117. It's of course has skyrocketed in recent years due to the uh, popularity of the Shadow character, and of course it's being his debut appearance. People want to buy this one in particular. It, it has a couple changes between that and the GameCube version, but overall it's not like a hundred dollar difference because the Adventure 2 battle on GameCube does not cost this much. Not long after the release of Sonic Adventure 2 and the Dreamcast died, Sonic Adventure 2 battle jumped onto the GameCube in less than a year than the original game came out. This is the game I actually don't rec I recommend you playing to be honest since it's pretty uh, great It's and I think it's an improvement overall for the most part. Like I said there is some changes between Adventure 2 and 2 battle but overall I think the 2 battle is has a little bit better features, especially the Child Garden. Your cutscenes are going to suffer in some minor texture stuff, but it's not that big a deal, at least in my opinion. While I can see a bigger argument made over Adventure versus Adventure DX, Song Adventure 2 Battle, I don't think it's much of an argument. Adventure 2 Battle is better. Unfortunately, the prices have gone up for this game quite a bit as well. It's not as cheap as Adventure DX, so the lose price be 40 and around $50 complete. Luckily, I've owned this game for a very long time, and I'm not giving up my copy. Sonic Adventure 2 was also released on uh, for modern consoles in the 2012 era for the Xbox 360. You could buy it for 10 bucks, and you could buy it on Xbox One and on Series X because Xbox is cool that way and allows you to buy their old consoles. Fortunately, if you're a PlayStation user, it was only available on PS3, and I'm pretty sure the stores are all shut down by now. 
And you could buy Second Adventure 2, of course, on Steam, which is the most idealized wise way to play it. It's 10 bucks, but you can always find games cheaper on Steam using certain methods and stuff like that. As you can see, it's very positive, so you might as well go play it, as well as you can mod it. So if you want to add some things from the Dreamcast version, there you go. It's yours for the taking. So do you want, do you have what it takes? It's Super Sonic Hedgehog Combat in the Nintendo GameCube, so give me everything you got. Give it to me. Go. No. Hey, where are you going? Get back here. <laughs> Sonic Adventure 2 takes the top spot. Oddly enough, I'm actually a little hesitant on this, actually. I'm not sure if I like Adventure 2 more than Adventure 1, but here's things that I think make Adventure 2 better than Adventure 1. Uh, there's no Bake the Cat, well, fishing games. I don't hate the character, but his fishing mechanics sucked in Adventure 1. Adventure 2 has a little bit more meat on bones and more replayability, at least in my opinion. Each of the side stories feels short, while Sonic's storyline feels pretty good in Sonic Adventure. It didn't feel it, the other stories didn't feel as satisfactory, even though they had interesting things going on in them. Adventure 2's dark story, I felt, was lacking story-wise. If they had more time to, in development, I feel like they could maybe add more to make them stand out a bit more. Maybe have to more for different perspectives, like Adventure 1 did, for each of their characters. But since it wasn't designed that way, you can kind of tell. I don't mind Tails being a mech, though I would like the mech's mechanics to be better, like getting the booster earlier and having a bit more of that gravity section near the end, maybe having them have a bit more height to it, is something I'm trying to say, essentially. But overall, Adventure 2 is better than Adventure 1, because the Chow Garden, that's about it. I do miss the hub worlds, and there's a lot of things I do like in Second Adventure. But Adventure 2, its story is great for the most part. Like I said, I think the dark story lacks a little bit compared to the main sto he hero story, which is more uh, consistent, at least, because the dark story, they kind of jump all, all over the place, which is kind of a... It doesn't work as well as the hero story where they're going from point A to point B pretty naturally. In Dark Story, you go, oh, jump, 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 jump. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of that, though I am a big fan of Adventure 2. It's just Adventure 1 has some things that it ones up in some areas. The Sonic gameplay is great, as well as the introduction of Shadow and Rouge, mainstays, who I like quite a lot. Uh, the re the uh, 100 percent in the game, you really appreciate the mechanics and the level design of each of the levels. They're really fun to replay over and over again, especially when you get all the upgrades and replay the levels. The Chow Garden is super fun. You can spend hours and hours in there. And there's something about playing this game, especially for the first time, and just exploring, experiencing the story for the first time. For me, I'm coming from a perspective where I play this game so many times that it's not as unique as it was once, but for a first time player, I do recommend this game quite a lot, especially if you want to play Chow Garden. That's just, just, just play Sonic Adventure 2 for the Chow Garden alone. Either way, I've talked a lot about this game, and i am decided to record this all in one day since I had nothing better to do right now. I'm in a mouth of change in my life, alright? Hopefully. And, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. We got this far. Uh, make sure to give me a like. I have a Patreon down in the description. And, uh, I, have, I think I'll have links to some videos I've used. I hope I remember that one. That was in a different language. I forget what language that was. Uh, sorry about that. And the uh, 700 differences between Sonic Adventure 2 and Battle. Uh, thank you. Next time, I believe the next game is Sonic Advance, which should be a much shorter video. That one probably will come out after this one. Who knows? Uh, these main videos take a while to make. I don't know if Heroes, which is the next main game, will take as much, since oh, this, even though they have unique different stories, there's not as much story to each of them. Their game levels are all exactly, pretty much the same. So I don't think I'll have much uh, to talk there, but we will see when we get to there. Also, there's no Chow Garden in that game, which the Chow Garden adds a lot. For some reason, Adventure 2 is the last game to have a full-on Chow Garden, not counting any of the mini baby Chow Garden stuff, which sucks. Anyway, I'll see you for Sonic Advance 1, as Sonic enters the Nintendo Arena.